barrier exists. To protect the school from burned ones. Be thankful you've never seen a burned one. Bloom. They're after me. Bloom could be one of the most powerful fairies the other world has ever known. I'm not like the rest of you. I didn't grow up here. Magic can be dangerous, as you well know. Someone's been lying to her. The history of this place is a lot darker than thin to snow. What you need are answers. Be careful who you trust. There's a war on the horizon. This is what we've been training for. We can help our friend. They deserve to know what I am. Whatever you're thinking of doing, I'm here. I always knew your path wouldn't be like everyone else's. But I can't wait to see who you become. I'm just kind of bummed I didn't see a single pair of wings. Want to stay in the know about your favorite Netflix shows and films? You'll find news, videos, interviews, and more on Taboom, the official Netflix site to help find and fuel your fandom. Stranger Things, The Gray Man, The Umbrella Academy, and more. Make Geek Week last all year on Netflix.com slash Taboom. ゲームに参加するしかないな。頼りになるのは自分だけ。このゲームに関してまずはっきりしてることは、ゲームマスターがいるってこと。お楽しみはこれからだよ。俺がこのゲームに主催者なら、このゲーム。10秒。바이러스란 살아남고자 하는 본능은 지능을 뛰어넘고 인류는 바이러스와의 싸움에서 단한 번도 이긴 적이 없어. 그럼 교과서가 틀린 거예요? 틀렸어. 야. 아니 뭔데? 무슨 일인데? 부산행이다. 저기... 우리가 왜 학교에 나와? 영화에 나와야지. 바이러스야. 감염된 인간은 북한의 공포심을 느낀 후에 
오직 살기 위해 상대를 공격한다. 인간으로 죽느니 괴물이 돼서라도 살아남으라고. 다 죽을 거야. 희망 같은 거 갖지 마요. 제 옆에 도와주세요. 죄송합니다. 다리 기다리고 있어요. 손 놓지 마. 놓치지도 말고. 맞다. I'm from a lineage thousands of years old of the best monster hunters to ever walk the earth. Even on good days, I feel like I still don't fit in. Like everyone else has it all figured out. Oh yeah, that. I haven't told anyone, of course. You are a legacy vampire made vampires with love. See their reflection in a mirror. We're hunters. More importantly, you're my daughter. Which is why we've decided you're ready for your first kill. He used to kill the monsters. In a world of make-believe. Your body is changing. Yeah, my body. But very soon, you are going to have to make your first kill. Hi. It's Juliet, right? Yeah. You're Calliope? Well, Cal's good. Who are you, Calliope? Where'd you come from? Addicted to loving you, how does it feel? You're nothing like the monsters I grew up hating. I just want to live my life. We can't be together. It won't work. I've forbidden you from seeing her. We're not supposed to be. I know my feelings for you are real. Julia and every legacy in Savannah dies tonight. Run now! I'll kill for you. We will have a problem. We will always have a problem. I had to choose between you and my family. I choose my family. What about us? Faced everyone, monster and human, who tried to come between us. We got this. I'll kill for you. Pogo. Get off the couch. <laughs> Wanna go for a walk? <laughs> Hey, buddy, come on, fetch. Hogo, what's this? Come to Papa. Hogo, oh, we all want to watch Geek Week. Netflix Geek Week 2022, June 6th to 10th. We have our first sneak peek for Geek Week. We brought everyone. Never should have done that. Did you adjust their life for that storm? I did. And tell us your name. Leif. Leif Eriksson. Where are you from? Greenland. I'm Harald Sigurdsson. Why are you in Kattegat? I've come to find someone. The entire north is threatened by the English king. <laughs> then I want to see if this fight is mine. What have you decided? Vikings are preparing for an invasion. What do you intend to do? Fight. What do you see in this Greenlander? Maybe his courage. Courage is not rare here. This is. You're a long way from home, Fredis. I am on a mission. To learn my destiny. Train her. Let's go again.
want to stay in the know about your favorite Netflix shows and films, you'll find news, videos, interviews and more on Tadoom, the official Netflix site to help find and fuel your fandom, Stranger Things, The Gray Man, The Umbrella Academy, and more. Make Geek Week last all year on Netflix.com slash Tadoom. Is this true? Can you summon light? She's real. Enemies are threatened by your mere existence. The whole world will be after you. The prize is one million Kruger. Bring me Alina Starkov. Am I a prisoner? All of Ravka is. Until you and I enter the fold. And destroy it from within. So no pressure. Everyone is looking at me like I'm the answer. Bring the light. Again. The only thing more powerful than you or me. The two of us, together. Good girl. Now the work begins. goes wrong. I'll find my way back to you. How many bullets do you have? Not enough. She'll realize she has only one equal. There are no others like us, and there never will be. You have no idea how much larger a role you have to play. Grandson's birthday only happens once a year. So does Geek Tweak. Stranger Things panel starts in 15. Sorry, it's Geek Tweak. Netflix Geek Tweak 2022, June 6th to 10th. Dear Billy, I don't know if you can even hear this. Ever since you left, everything's been a total disaster. For a while, we tried to be happy. Normal. But I know that's impossible. you guys far from Hawkins because I thought you'd be safe a war is coming I'm afraid
afraid your friends at Hawkins are very much in the eye of the storm. I don't have my powers. I don't know how to say this other than just to say it. Without you, we can't win this war. See you on the other side. On the other side. I was convinced I was put here for some other reason. Maybe I can still help. Even if it's the last thing I do. People say Hawkins is cursed. They're not way off. It's time. You have lost. Sandman is the story of the place that we go when we close our eyes at night, and it's called The Dreaming. And The Dreaming is ruled by Morpheus. For 32 years, anybody who read Sandman read the comics. That world is ending. I'm here at Shepperton Studios, and I'm getting to see what happens when you bring dreams to life. I'm someone who is a, an obsessive Sandman fan. It's an awesome responsibility because it's something that is so beloved. I read the Sandman graphic novels, so I knew that I simply had to be involved in this project because something truly unique was going to happen. The sets are vast. Great amount of detail and care has been put into how it's being brought to life. Holy shit. This is amazing. We're in the Undercroft. Our art department, our set decorators, our production designers, they are wizards. They are absolute magicians. And to see what they've conjured here, it's like walking around inside your own dream. This is Sandman being made for people who love Sandman by people who love Sandman. And I cannot wait until people see this. Introducing Joy. <laughs> joy, 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 joy. Joy can be a miracle pill. An antidepressant that cures OCD, lowers anxiety, and increases focus but the drug contains the T-Virus. And the T-Virus can make monsters. Right? Try and stay very still. Guess what? Geek Freak is back. So we're calling all geeks, the geek adjacent, the geek curious, basically anyone who loves to geek out. Wow, okay, there's a lot of us. Love it. It's time to admit that geeks are fing great. Right back at you, sunshine. We are the hyper-passionate, the super-curious, the ones willing to dive into the unknown. 
or get scared shitless by it. Either way works. Welcome to worlds that give us those edge of your couch, spill your beer, piss your pants moments, and also give us this dude. This does not sound like me at all. And some crazy shit like this. Oh, right. And Sandman's coming. Trust me. I'm the king of dreams, ruler of the nightmare realm. It is out of this world, I'm telling you. Me and the geek is about to pay off. Welcome to a week where we can all get geeked. Welcome to our world. People love a grand reveal. That's fucking insane. Fucking insane is kind of what we do. Netflix Geek Week 2022, June 6th to 10th. Hello, Tree. Are you well? Welcome, Welcome to, to Geek, Geek Week. Week! Netflix Geek Week 2022 is all about getting you the latest news, trailers, and all kinds of first looks for your favorite Netflix shows, films, games, and more. I'm Jay Stoops. And I'm Jacob Scott Thomas Bertrand. And I mean also the All Valley Champ. Oh, you can't forget it. Put some respect <laughs> on my name. That's right. And today is all about series, and we have a lot to cover. So much. We're dropping new titles, fresh trailers, and checking in with some of our favorite stars. It is going to be a wild, wild week, and we are beyond stoked for all the surprises in store. There's tons of horror, which is totally my jam, and Jacob is gonna get through it. Yeah, <laughs> like, the nightmares are hard. <laughs> I get scared. Like Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, School Tales, the series, and all things Mike Flanagan. I mean, what about the final season of Lock and Key? And I cannot wait or Shadow and Bone either. Oh, and Resident <laughs> Evil. So many great shows, so little time. So let's dive into our first reveal of the day. Yeah, we promise you surprises, and here we have a very first look at one of the most highly anticipated new shows coming in 2022. Yeah, let's see it. Oh my goodness, I want more. Yeah, I know, that was barely anything, but it was still so much. Oh I my know. God. The snaps, I'm gonna be hearing that when I wake up in the morning. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was our first look at Wednesday, the new Netflix series bringing to life the twisted world of the Adams Family in a whole new way. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love Wednesday? She is a style icon, I gotta say. Yeah, I mean, I know I personally try to emulate her style every <laughs> single day. Uh, Jenna Ortega plays the title role along with her disembodied ally Thing, and oh my God, this girl is the queen of horror right yeah, now. Yeah, seriously, she's killing it. In this new show for the first time ever, Wednesday is a teenager at the gothic Nevermore Academy. She gets pulled into a murder mystery that has major implications for her entire family. Wednesday features a stellar creative team also, led by co-creators Miles Millar and Al Goff of Smallville. And director Tim Burton. The man, the myth, the legend himself. That's so cool. <laughs> For more of the latest news on Wednesday, be sure to follow Wednesday Netflix on Instagram. Wednesday. I mean, what a major moment to open Geek Week with. And we're just getting started, but I mean, what could possibly follow that? <laughs> I know it seems impossible that we could have something even more exciting, but <laughs> Guillermo del Toro? Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty sick. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro is one of the most prolific voices of the horror genre, a legend of the supernatural. And he's curating a brand new series for Netflix, spotlighting some of the most creative and innovative minds working in horror today. Yeah, his new show, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, features an all-star lineup of amazing talent, both in front of the camera and behind the camera. Curious to know what to expect? Uh, let's open that metaphorical cabinet and find out. <laughs>
so eerie. Holy shit. I am oh I am God. gonna need a minute to recover from that. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, first of all, we need more horror anthology shows. I that is my personal jam, but also the directors of Mandy, the yeah. Babadook. Holy cow, that's pretty nuts. Oh, they had me at Guillermo del Toro. Now I'm <laughs> gonna be counting the days. I don't know if I'm ready for all these nightmares I'm gonna be having. <laughs> I don't know. I'll we'll send you some tips. I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> um, Panos Cosmatos, uh, Jennifer Kent, Catherine Hardwick. Del Toro has entrusted some of top shelf horror directors with their own interpretations of some of his personal favorite horror stories. I, I don't, I can't imagine anything better than this. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, they're joined by a talented, star-studded cast to bring all these stories to life. I mean, Ben Barnes, Rupert Grint, Sophia Botella. Not to mention Andrew Lincoln, Crispin Glover, and S.C. Davis. All in one anthology series. I, is this allowed? It's I, it's literally too good. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool to see Del Toro's creepy, beautiful brand of horror continuing to take over Netflix. Okay. Speaking of creepy, uh, you want to hear a scary story? It's like 9 a.m. <laughs> Isn't it a little early? Just trying to push you into I a little, <laughs> come on, let me, let me teach you the ways of the horror fans. Oh, All right, listen, God. it's close to midnight somewhere. Shout out to Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect time to talk about The Midnight Club, which is Mike Flanagan's newest horror show. Oh, yeah, you mean Mike Flanagan, the creator of The Haunting of Hill House and Midnight Mass. That might play. <laughs> <laughs> and we have an exclusive first look from another familiar face, uh, Raul Coley. Oh, let's check it out. All right, everyone. Um, I'm Rahul Coley, and you may have seen me in some shows like uh, uh, Midnight Mass and uh, The Haunting of Blind Manor. But the thing I probably get recognized for the most uh, is probably last year's host of Geeked Week. Um, but unfortunately, I can't be there with you guys this year uh, because I'm currently filming a new show with my good pal, Mr. Mike Flanagan. Um, we are currently in production for the Fall of the House of Usher for Netflix. Um, I can't really give you any details and it's not ready. Um, but I do have something else that I could tease from Mr. Flanagan. Um, so picture this, okay? A group of teens gather around nightly to share ghostly horror stories in like a shape-shifting mansion with a kind of like bloody history, right? I probably didn't sell it that well, uh, but what I can do is now give you the first look at the Midnight Club from the master horror himself, Mr. Mike Flanagan. To those before. To those after. To us now. And to those beyond. Seen. Or unseen. Here. But not here. Seen or unseen. Here but not here. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> I can't tell if like the kids are evil or if the house is evil. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I mean, I that looks so creepy. First of all, that cast looks amazing. I, yeah. I'm very intrigued. I love spooky teens. That's like a thing. That's like a genre that we absolutely <laughs> need. Like, cause teens we are. We need to tap spooky. more into spooky teens. I'll That's be honest. What we need more of. Teens kind of freak me out. Like, just regular teens. I'm <laughs> like, you know, youths. But especially when they start, you know hosting midnight vigils and stuff. I'm like, yeah. Dang, well, so good to see you, Raul again. Raul hosted the show last year, and you know, I'm still waiting for my Street Fighter 2 rematch. Come on. Dude, you're li you literally, okay. Oh, yeah, my God. Oh. I still think he cheated. I mean. I think they had some backstage stuff going on. I, so. I believe in you, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> the, new, the new cast of that teaser looked killer. Uh, 
Maybe even literally. I really hope not. Uh, <laughs> Mike Flanagan always puts together an exceptional cast. The Midnight Club reunites him with some of his most frequent acting collaborators, which includes Samantha Sloyan, Zach Guilford, Onara Simone. Plus Igby Rigney, uh, Matt Bedell, and of course, Raul Coley. It also stars some new Flanagan faces like Iman Benson, Ruth Codd, and Aya Furukawa. Also, Adia, Sarian Subkota, and William Chris Sumter as the titular Midnight Club. Based off the novel of the same name by Christopher Pike, Mike Flanagan's The Midnight Club is coming to Netflix soon. Speaking of scary stories, this next one is chilling and I am already afraid. <laughs> Do you need to take some deep breaths? I, horror is your thing. Yeah, so. <laughs> it really gets me. It knows how to make me scared. Coming from Thailand, School Tales is an eight episode horror series inspired by eight horrifying comic stories. During the day, the school belongs to the students, but at night, it's unfortunately a different story. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? <laughs> Today, we have three first look clips from three different episodes. Uh, let's take a look at the first one from the episode titled uh, A Walk in School, which already is scary to me. Oh, God. ตอนนี้นะครับผมจะพาทุกๆคนเนี่ยมาทําภารกิจพิสูจน์ความเชื่อโบราณโบราณเก่าๆที่ว่าผีเนี่ยมีอยู่จริงและทุกโรงเรีย
นี่ครับทุกคนนี่ทุกคนดูฮะพิรุธหนักนะเนี่ยป้าแปลว่าในโมเนี่ยต้องมีอะไรมันงั้นไม่ห่วงขนาดนี้หรอกหลบไปป้าลบเฮ้ยอย่านะโอ้ยโอ้ยกระดูกอะไรวะเนี่ยI want to know what's in that pot. Why does he want to know what's in it so bad? He's being a little rude. Okay, here's to the ma'am. Here's what I'm picking up from this: is that you can never trust a live streamer because this is this seems to be a reoccurring trend. But see, look at look at all the cameras. A live stream. I'm telling you, don't trust them. No way. I'm never live streaming ever again. This horror anthology from Five Star Productions is coming soon to Netflix, so stay tuned for more information. And now. It's time for another new series. We have a first look at a new sci-fi drama, The Imperfects, where 20 s o m e t h i n g s get turned into monsters by evil scientists against their wills. Well, the cast recorded us a special message to set up an exciting surprise, so let's take a look. Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Hello, everyone. Hi, my name is Rihanna Jagpal, and I play Abby Singh. I play Dr. Sydney Burke. I play Tilda, and I play Juan Ruiz at the upcoming Netflix series, The Imperfects. Some things I have in common with Tilda. Singing is also my medicine. However, I'm more of a shower singer than Tilda. Abby is a brilliant scientist, and I think that her and I are very similar in the sense that there is nothing that can get in the way of us helping the people that we love. I relate to Sydney in uh, the perfectionist kind of way, where everything has its place and is neat and is organized. Yeah, she's pretty meticulous, and I think so am I. Just ask my husband. <laughs> Why do I relate to with Juan? Well. We are both very talented drawers. We're both very extremely handsome. He's from Mexico. Yo también soy de México, and we both have a very, very terrifying monster inside us that we can't control. Well, that's too much information. Anyways, fans can expect a lot from this show. There's so many surprises and twists and turns. Every episode opens. With a bang. It has suspense. It has monsters. It has evil scientists. Unexpected love interests. Some good old fashioned. Sexual tension. I'm very, very excited for people to see this show. It's a whole fun, fantastic world where you just kind of get to lose yourself and have a good time. Season one of The Imperfect. Don't miss it. You're gonna love it. Do you remember Dr. Sarkov? He experimented on all of us without our permission. You, me, Zelda. We all had adverse reactions. We're not even human anymore. Technically, no. Well, that's fucking great. If we're not human, what are we? You're that looks freaking sick. Yeah, that's that's definitely got my interest peaked. I yeah, the shot of the werewolf thing with the spike. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Plus, I mean, I I love a story about suppressing a monster in your 2 0 s I feel like that's. <laughs> That's widely relatable. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Inyaki, man, that guy's killing it. I can't wait. The This whole cast really looks, cool. looks crazy impressive. I, yeah. I can't wait to see what they've got. That, I, plus, I mean, uh, yeah, the premise, the premise is is killer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop with these puns. The puns. Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna. It's a soft promise. Um, we also have some exclusive posters from the Imperfects showing each of the characters. Uh, check this one out. Oh yeah, she looks very cool. All yeah. three of them. I want to get along. There's a rock star too. I like a good rock star. Uh, the rock star is good. Everybody's artsy in this kid. <laughs> oh, poor kid. I feel like he's just so confused going through all this. <laughs> like, really doesn't like he's a werewolf. Doesn't know it. Figuring it out. Wakes up naked in the woods and covered in blood. Your 2 0 s are hard. Like your 2 0 s are hard. You know. <laughs> hey, why can't we just normalize that? All right. 2 0 s are hard. I already know this is gonna be my favorite character. <laughs> I just like it. She's. Are you fucking kidding me? She just seems cool. I'm down looks, for it. She looks really tough. Yeah, these are definitely not the college clicks that I'm used to. <laughs> 
The Imperfects has an all-star lineup of Iñaki Godoy, Morgan Taylor Campbell, Rihanna Jagpal, and Italia Ricci. Be sure to check out this brand new series only on Netflix. And maybe we should, or can we move on to <laughs> something a little sweeter? You deserve no a No more horror and <laughs> scaring me constantly. You've, been, you've done so well so far. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I mean, that's a good idea. Did you see season one of Sweet Tooth? I did, I loved it. Uh, I can't wait for season two as well. Oh my God, me too. Uh, what kind of uh, hybrid do you think it'd be? I'd obviously have to be a hawk. Mm. Considering all of the wordplay that I've been getting in, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that that's my bad, that's my bad. <laughs> Is anyone out there like me? I need to find them. But I won't cry for yesterday. So wholesome. Man, that kid really is the cutest. He, he's so adorable. <laughs> well, season two of Sweet Tooth was announced in 2021, and the cast has been hard at work bringing to life all the latest adventures of Gus, Jeff, and Bear. I mentioned you're really excited about season two, and lucky for you, we actually have a very special update from the cast who's shooting in New Zealand. Mm. This is a story, a story of a very special group of people who found themselves at the end of filming season two of Sweet Tooth. Everybody, that is a wrap on season yeah. two. Yeah. It's a wrap of season two of Sweet Tooth. It's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long journey and it's been very hard work, but it's been amazing fun. And I can't wait to share with you what happens in season two. The stakes are higher. The battles are bigger. Uh, the mean guys are meaner. You're in for a treat. It's going to be an amazing adventure. But this isn't the end of their story. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Bye bye. <laughs> Man, the mean guys are meaner? How long have you had that candy bar? I've had it in my back pocket for a while. I literally just said I was hungry, but I mean, if you haven't seen Sweet Tooth, you're missing out. It's the most uplifting show about the apocalypse I've, I've ever seen. So wholesome. It is, it's amazing. And the incredible series is based on the DC comic book series of the same name by Jeff Lemire. And it's produced by Robert Downey Jr. and Susan Downey. At the end of season one, we were left wondering if Jeff and Amy would save the hybrids. Yeah, and will Gus be reunited with his mom? Which we have to know. Uh, but we have to wait until season two to find out. But you can catch season one right now and be sure to follow Sweet Tooth Netflix and Netflix Geeked for all the season two updates. Yeah. That's a good bar. Yeah, you give should. me some of that, for real. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, look what I just found in my pocket. Whoa. What is that mysterious object conveniently placed in your pocket? I know. Some kind of key. Whatever you think you understand about those keys. You don't. I don't think the masses understand, but I think I do. This is the key to unlock the season three teaser trailer for Lock and Key. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, are you serious? Yeah, it's gonna work, absolutely. It's the third and <laughs> final mean, season. I believe that this is exactly how you do it, actually. Yeah. No, it's gonna work. Nothing makes more sense than this. If I do it a million times, it's gonna play the, the teaser. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah, I almost got it. We're gonna unlock the teaser and find out. Oh, God. <laughs> is always with us. Well, you can try it on the way. But it's always there. We've been tangled up in this for years. Who the hell are you? Your captain. And something more. This is our house. Those keys belong to us. Boo.
That looks so ominous. I'm so invested. What was that when he was screaming in front of the angel wing? Yeah, I mean, I, what the heck was that? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm more invested in, in what's going on with, with the well lady. I really want to know exactly. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what is going on? I'm just, I'm so curious. I mean, to have this kind of power at your fingertips is so crazy. I want to know what it all means. Yeah, and what it leads to. Yeah, and what the significance of, like, Key House is to the family. I just, I'm so, I'm, I'm invested. I'm very invested. I can't wait to see more Jackson, but, you know, it's from the showrunners Carlton Cuse and Meredith Avril. Lock and Key is an adaptation of the best-selling comic book series by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. Season two ended with a pretty massive cliffhanger, a new threat. <laughs> And the most dangerous yet looms in Matheson. In the upcoming season, the Log family will uncover more magic within Key House to take on this new threat in an epic final battle, and you will not want to miss it. And I think I speak for all the fans when I say we are sad to see it end, but can't wait to find out what happens. The fandom has been guessing and hoping and predicting all kinds of outcomes for the series. Uh, it's been all over social media. Don't miss the final season of Lock and Key when it premieres on Netflix on August 10th. Wow, we actually get a date. That's pretty sick. Oh, we're getting we're getting fed today. Oh really uh, yeah. Are. And not just from whatever is in Aunt Jong's uh, pot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Next up, we have a series that's making a triumphant return for a second season. At a magical boarding school where magical teens hone their magical skills, magical problems always seem to come up. Funny I how that I love happens. magical boarding schools. And we're talking about Fate the Wink Saga. I always knew your path wouldn't be like everyone else's. but I can't wait to see who you become. Pretty cool. Fire eyes, it's getting me. <laughs> Insp inspired by the beloved animated show, Fate the Wing Saga follows Bloom, a fairy with fire powers, which is kind of arguably the best kind of powers. I was gonna say, it's pretty sick. Yeah, when she enrolls in a magical boarding school at Alfea. Yeah, with the help of her new fairy friends, Stella, Aisha, Tara, and Yusa, Season one sees Bloom learning more about her past while the team faces off against terrifying threats of the burned ones. For somebody with fire powers, how do you I, like I was like, dramatic. wait, this <laughs> might not be the best thing ever. Now that she's, Am I the problem? Am I the problem? <laughs> she's fighting burned people. <laughs> Seems like they already got the fire I on mean, them. I mean, yeah, know. I feel like she's maybe, how do you overcome that? Either? Maybe she get like a buddy with some water powers and yeah. they can like, steam them. Ice. Like hot steam, maybe. <laughs> Spiral to just eating them to death. And we've got a fan favorite that's finally joining the cast of Fate the Wing Saga in season two, Flora, played by Paulina Chavez. Yeah, Fate fans, you're in luck because we're able to reveal the first look at the Earth Fairy Flora in the season two clip. Held her en route? I'm pretty sure he's tried it. Can you remember what the bites on Devon's body looked like? Multiple incisions, a pattern. Might narrow it down. It doesn't matter. This is a useless exercise. Dad already said he's not going to let you help. Well, I'm very convincing. More so than Rosalind? Because she was very clear no students were allowed near Devin. Dad won't do anything she doesn't approve of, pathetic as that is. You need to lay off him. And you need to get back to the school grounds. It's dangerous out there. I'll be done when I'm done. Whoever you are, I'd come up very, very slowly. Was so wholesome. That was such a beautiful moment of friendship. I love it. You almost don't realize how terrifying those like poison ivy esque powers would I actually know, I be. I thought I was gonna get attacked by vines. I know. Then they started growing beautiful flowers. Went the whole other direction. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's a new arrival to Althea. Yeah, she's very floral, and uh, fans are pumped to see Flora join the fun in season two. And Paulina nails this role. 
Floor will join Bloom, Stella, Aisha, Tara, and Musa in season two as they fight to save Althea from a new evil threat that threatens the inhabitants. Why can't they just catch a break, man? I know. Why can't they just hang out, burn some stuff? Give each other hugs. Make it grow back with the Earth fairies. Between the burnings. Yeah, in between. <laughs> you know, you don't have to wait too long to find out what happens next. We have exciting news that season two is coming to Netflix in fall 2022. That's really soon. It's going to be hard to prioritize these, which the watch order of these yeah, shows. Everything is coming out so quickly. I'm really excited about... <sighs> This, this one's going to be your number one priority, come I know. Come on, come on, because give it Warrior to me. Because Warrior Nun fans, we yeah. have seen you asking and asking and asking. Uh, I think Jacob's personally been harassing the Netflix team, uh, <laughs> asking for any tease of season two. Fortunately, the wait is over. I love in action sequences when they speed up the hits. Yes. Oh, that's so sick. Well, if you're into creepy mythology, badass superpowers, and intense fight scenes between nuns, Which who, who is it? Yeah, who <laughs> wouldn't love that? Uh, then this series is definitely made for you. I'm so pumped. <laughs> Warrior Nun follows an orphaned teen named Ava who wakes up in a morgue. I mean, like, universal experience right there. <laughs> with a new lease on life and a divine artifact embedded in her back and discovers she possesses superpowers as the chosen halo bearer for a secret sect of demon hunting nuns. It's the best type of nun. I wonder where that secret sect practices and if I could go to them. I want to find like that section of Catholic history. Yes. That would be like, I want to know where, what codex they got this uh, out yeah. We have a first look at season two, so let's check it out. I know. You want to know what happened. Tell you the truth, I'm still figuring it out myself. First, I was dead. Then, I was alive. <laughs> then, I got tricked. And then, the devil kicked my ass. Still, there's a thousand items left on my life to-do list. But, you can't check them off if you're dead. Camilla. No one in history has ever defeated Adriel and lived. Well then, it looks like we're gonna have to make history. I told you that I would learn to swim. Wow, thank you, Warrior Nun. You know, I don't, I'm just saying, Jesus walked on water. She was fully sprinting she was across sprinting. water. If I'd have known that that's what it was like to be a nun, I would have been a lot more interested. Yeah, damn, yeah. I would have joined a long time ago. <laughs> Where's the sign-up sheet? I feel like we really missed out. The pitch that was given to me was very different. <laughs> <laughs> But everyone's favorite demon fighting nuns are back in season two of Warrior Nun. For more action and updates, check out Netflix Geeked on Instagram. I can't believe how many first looks and big reveals we've already shown you today, and we're just getting started. We're, we're very lucky. We're very lucky people. <laughs> Later today, we've got everyone's favorite, of course, the Brellies. Brellies. Together to debut an exclusive clip from the Umbrella Academy season three premiere and preview what we have to look forward to. I'm so excited for this. Yes, and we will also finally, finally, finally going to find out when The Sandman is premiering on Netflix when Neil Gaiman, Tom Sturridge, and the cast sit down with Felicia Day to talk about the long-awaited adaptation. That's gonna be sick. I'm so excited. <laughs> but first, we're not done just yet. It's time for Jacob, Shadow and Bone. Heck yeah. Did you watch season one? Of I mean, I, I did. Uh, and <laughs> it was a global sensation, and I'm still fighting with people online about whether I'm team Darklina, Melina, or Genialina. So. I mean, we do need to get you off Tumblr. We have talked about that. Yeah, but. my moody moment, okay? <laughs> During last year's Geeked Week, we announced that Shadow and Bone would be coming back for season two. 
And since then, we've gotten some long-awaited casting news that Jack Wolf will be playing the final crow, Wylan, and Patrick Gibson is playing the heartthrob, Nikolai Lamstov. And badasses Anna Leong, Brophy, and Louis Tan are playing the dynamic duo Tamar and Tolia. But, I mean, the fans, we, the fans, <laughs> we want another update. We need one, and well, Jay Stoops, you're in luck. Because we have a very special video from the cast. <laughs> Hello, Creatureverse. In honor of Netflix's Geeks Week, we thought we would share some exciting news with you. We've officially wrapped season two of Shadow and Bone, and we cannot wait for you to see what we've been up to. Really sad that it's over, but also very excited for you guys to see it. Oh, we can't give too much away at this time. We wanted to answer a few questions to keep you guys guessing on what's to come. Love, power, heartbreak. Heartrending, heart pounding, swashbuckling. Full of love. Bigger, bolder, and better. Action packed, epic, and protesting. It's, it's just gotta be hashtag guilty. Guilty. <laughs> Underestimated. Angry. Fierce. Traumatized but also the best. Come on, it's not even a question. Come on. Jesper skills with pistols, please. I'm gonna have to go with Tamar's axes. Sorry, Jesper. Come on, guys. That's a no-brainer. Here's axes all the way. Come on, you're speaking to a crow. Crow club, all the way. I'm gonna say the crow club. Definitely the crow club. Uh, drinking, gambling, sounds great. Year in Hellgate. All day long, I think I'd do all right in there, make a few friends. Across the fold, for sure. Um, you know, there's things you'll see in Hellgate that you can't on. True, true. There it is. Waffles, 100%. That's gonna be pancakes. Pancakes, a lovely vegan crepe. We are all so, so excited and we cannot wait for you to see season two. Happy Geeked Week and we'll see you on the other side of the fold. That's a wrap! Did that. I, I just wish I had a British accent. <laughs> wow, I wish I was a part of them. It's so sweet. I like how it was like, cross the fold or spend a year. <laughs> and it's like, pancakes or waffles. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, based on the hit novels by Lee Bardugo, Shadow on Bone has an all star cast of Jesse May Lee, Ben Barnes, Archie Renault as well as Freddie Carter, Amita Saman, and Kit Young. Kanij Polaroid when? I mean, be sure to follow uh, Shadow and Bone on Instagram and Netflix Geeked for all the season two updates. Are you ready to introduce the next show yet? Do you need a breather? Because it's a big one. Yes, I've recovered from my Shadow and Bone fandom. Uh, I am more than excited to introduce the first look at season four of Manifest. Yes, and we were so stoked when Netflix announced Manifest will be coming back for its fourth and final season. Yeah, fans can't wait to find out what actually happened to the passengers on flight 828. And we now have a special message from Josh Dallas. So take it away, Josh. Hey, it's Josh. We're working hard here filming the final season of Manifest. There is a two-part final season coming soon to Netflix. But in the meantime, here's a clip coming your way. Cherry blossoms. There you are.
What did it say? I mean, it said... Something eight to eight? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm more preoccupied with the fact that it's carved into his arm. Yeah. But, <laughs> I was but like, it what definitely. Is, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but when I, you know, do my investigation, yeah, yeah. investigating into, you know, the docks, the last thing I expect is an arm to reach out to me <laughs> in a shipping container. I'm just so curious, like, how long that dude's been there? Exactly. Why call? Well, you couldn't have carved that on the side of the wall. I'm also. And this guy went all in, <laughs> carving it on his arm. That's intense. It must be important. The shining light coming out of the shipping container. What's going on there? In dark inside. I don't know. Yeah. It seems like they're trying to hoodwink us. Exactly. I'm not it. Yeah. There's something. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and call it now. We're smarter than that. Something amiss is happening here. Yeah. There is something amiss. We we figured it out. There's there's a mystery <laughs> here. You heard it here first. <laughs> so get ready for the epic conclusion of Manifest by rewatching seasons one through three. Maybe that maybe your answer is there. Yeah, possibly. And what's on the arm. <laughs> <laughs> but up next, we have something a little more my speed, a treat from our friends at Vikings Volhola. You are here because you are Vikings! Oh yeah, that is badass. Wow, that was that's pretty sick. That was quite violent. But I I'm like that. Why, I yeah, uh, it's pretty 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 badass. It's giving badass. me hawk flashbacks. <laughs> I like it. I'm feeling invigorated. That is what it reminded me of. I wish Thank I you. my I wish my sides were shaved and I'm a mohawk right now. <laughs> the evolution of the original series Vikings was a massive hit when it dropped on Netflix earlier this year, and already a second season has been announced. While we can't show you what's in store for Leif, Freitas, and Harold in season two just yet, we do have a season one blooper reel to help tide you over. I love blooper reels, I'm so excited. Uh, let's check out some of the laughs behind the making of Vikings Valhalla. Skull. Skull. Skull, Vikings. We heard that it was Geeked Week before we set off to battle towards our next season. We wanted to stop in and say thank you. Thank you so much. You helped us to become a top 10 series in 91 countries. Which my brain can't even comprehend. And we are so excited to be able to bring you not one, but two more seasons of Vikings Valhalla. As a thank you, we wanted to share with you some top secret info about the next season. Firstly, there's not gonna be any fighting, no axes, no swords, no arrows. We're done with that. Secondly, no more romance. Mm -mm. They, uh, they said it wasn't clicking. And finally, Pagans and the Christians will become the greatest of friends and there will be peace everywhere. <laughs> now, all jokes aside, a Viking wouldn't come to Geeks Week without a gift. So we offer up the greatest gift of all. A video of us making complete and utter fools of ourselves. Please enjoy, for the first time ever, a glorious reel of Vikings Valhalla bloopers. They say action. They did say action, yes. <laughs> Come at me. Turn to your garden. Full back! <laughs> oh, <laughs> you secure the. No. <coughs> no. Let me do that again. Let me do that again. I'm gonna do that again. But I believe I could be of service to you here in England should you cry. Should you. <laughs> Would you like to start again? I'd love to start again. Let me do that again. Wrong line. <laughs> is my hair okay like this? Okay, yeah. It is now. It is now. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Just the bacon I slept with. Oh, 
That's great. You know, I've always, I've, I've always thought that the best way to approach getting on a horse is to just... Yeah, huh. just... <laughs> what is it, just like dead fish onto it? <laughs> Ugh, I'm sure the horse would love that. <laughs> I mean, it looks like the cast had an amazing time Yeah, you just flop sideways on the horse the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacob's got some tips for you guys. Yeah, there we go. Well, hey, if you like Vikings and you can't get enough of period action adventure shows, then you're going to really enjoy this next Sword and Sandal series. That's a good sword and sandal. Yeah, it's a, it's a good genre. Yeah, this isn't written. I just came up with that. I am prolific. <laughs> <laughs> We're, of course, talking about barbarians. Nichts besteht für immer. There's just, there's just something about dudes angry, screaming into the camera with their arms out. You know, I mean, it speaks to me. I don't know what it is. It's like it's vicarious. You know, we live in such a world where, like, if you get frustrated with someone, the best you can do is just be like. Oh, okay, like a little passive aggression in your day. But yeah. apparently, uh, there used to be other options. You know what? The next time you're at Starbucks, you should try that, JC. <laughs> just a mess of water. Ah! Pull out my battle axe and start screaming. Yeah, exactly. Well, Barbarians is about a Roman officer torn between the mighty empire that raised him and his own tribal people, which leads to an epic historical clash. Season one ended with a massive battle of the Romans ambushing the Barbarians. And, I mean, what's going to happen next? We have a sneak peek at season two. Where are we going to go? the Romans are gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, spoiler alert, but uh, the Romans did not meet a very, <laughs> very... The Romans... Things don't end well for the Romans. <laughs> Just, but I do love to see a woman holding an ax, I'm not gonna lie. There you go. You heard it here first on Geek Weeks, folks. Barbarian Season 2 is finally coming to Netflix this fall. This fall, everything's this fall. I know, it's crazy. Well, you can check out Season 1 now on Netflix if you haven't already. And if you have, I mean, why not just rewatch it? Yeah, prepare for the fall. Yeah. Up next, we have a series that's become a global sensation. Based on the webtoon, now at our school, we have All of Us Are Dead. I love zombies. <laughs> All of Us Are Dead is a coming-of-age story set in catastrophic circumstances where a group of loyal friends band together to overcome zombies uh, and crushes and loss and bullies. Cast got together uh, for a special message to help us celebrate some of the big news. All of Us Are Dead is coming back for season two. <laughs> I, well, regardless of how into zombies you are, I think it's safe to say that all of us are here for All of Us Are Dead. <laughs> all right, everybody, our time with you is almost at an end, so you know what's coming up next. It's gotta be good. Uh, but don't go anywhere. 
Even though Jacob and I may soon be uh, saying our farewell, uh, Felicia Day is gonna be sitting down with the cast of The Umbrella Academy and The Sandman <laughs> and revealing some exciting exclusives from the upcoming series. Meanwhile, our friends at Most got together with the cast of First Kill and put on a vampire ball. How do I get invited to that? <laughs> I need to go to a vampire ball. Uh, be a vampire. <laughs> and I have prerequisite. Missed the first requirement. Okay. <laughs> and that's just day one of Geek Week. We have four more days of big reveals, cast reunions, and Stranger Things. <laughs> We gotta get you as a sound guy. Like, I really could. <laughs> I could talk. You're a one-man Foley artist. Come on, Netflix, hook it up. <laughs> uh, okay, but we have promised some big news before we sign off. Yes, and for those of you who have been up in the Netflix Geek comments demanding more news on Alice in Borderland, your time is now. Well, it's been two long years since Alice in Borderland first shopped on Netflix, and in the time since, it's ranked in the top 10 in over 70 countries twice. The second time after the release of the mega hit Squid Game. And the upcoming season is sure to be incredible. For those of you who are unfamiliar, let's take a look back at season one. トランプの巻ごとに大まかなゲーム全てのトランプを集めることだ。カードは全てビーチの財産。トランプ集めれば帰れるって。それ本当なの。I <笑>何かを手に入れるためには何かを失う。何を考えて命には限りがある。そんなこと考えずに今まで生きてきた。希望はまだ残ってる。生きたい。Oh my god, that looks so good. So intense. If you haven't watched it yet, Alice in Borderland is a Japanese sci-fi thriller about gamers who end up in a parallel world where they have to play for survival. And the upcoming season is sure to be incredible. Just take a look at these images of the stars Kento Yamazaki and Tao Tsushia. Oh no. I mean, they don't they don't look thrilled. It's so dire. It's <laughs> so dire. Kento Amazaki as the video game obsessed Ryo Hayariso. I feel like he's looking at the game master. Ooh, you think it's a big reveal here? And Tao Tsushia as the mountain climbing obsessed Yuzaha Usagi. This is a battle to, to get one final winner. That's the winner right there. If you love Squid Game, Kingdom, or Hellbound, you're sure to love Alice in Borderland. Hey, uh, Jacob, by the way, are you a fan of One Piece? Come on now, <laughs> come on, give it to me. <laughs> I had a feeling. One Piece is one of the biggest manga. I get that? Okay. Yeah, pretty. It's been giving me some lessons. <laughs> and uh, anime of all time. I can't believe it has over 1,000 episodes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. And Luffy's quest to be the Pirate King is coming to live action in the new Netflix series starring Inyaki Godoy, Emily Rudd, Makenyu, Jacob Romero Gibson, and Taz Skyler. The cast has been hard at work in South Africa, bringing the world of One Piece to life. And to get a sense of the show, we got an exclusive behind the scenes look at a truly massive set. Oh. So uh, let's roll the clip. Hello everyone, I'm Iñaki Godoy and I play Luffy in One Piece. Hi, I'm Steve Maeda, I'm the showrunner of One Piece. And I'm Matt Owens, showrunner. And as you can see, we're here in South Africa bringing One Piece to life. Uh, we'd like to show you a sneak peek of some of our massive sets. As the biggest One Piece fan, it's been really exciting seeing some of my favorite places from the manga become a reality. All right, enough talk. Roll the clip! Roll it! 
Yoda's world is so unique. Seeing all of this stuff in person, being able to reach out and touch it has just been such an experience. Our crews down here in South Africa are incredible. And it's been so rewarding to see them taking Oda's world and bringing it to life. Because of the level of detail and attention that goes into all of these sets, they take a good amount of time. I mean, right now we're building Arlong's map room and it's already been a couple of weeks, but it's a big build because it's a really important location. A lot of drama goes down in there. A lot of action goes down in there. So we have to get it just right. I love all the ships, but Baratie is massive. It is iconic. It is surrounded by floating docks, along with a bar inside the fish mouth, which is going to be Zoro's favorite spot in those uh, episodes. At the end of it all, I'm most excited to just be able to share this world with old fans and new. We get to go to work every day and walk on these massive sets and see these characters come to life. It's a really special experience and a privilege, and we can't wait to share it with you. Oh my, I can't believe they built all of that. I mean, to see those sets in live action is just, it's gotta be so exciting for long time One Piece fans. That was our first look at the Baratier. That's so cool. <laughs> I mean, the attention to detail, everything we saw, it's so intricate, it's so incredible. Yeah, and we actually have some exciting casting news for One Piece. Choma Umuela will play Nojiko. Celeste Lutz will be Kaya. And Alexander Maniatis will be Clahador. And we'll have Langley Kirkwood as Captain Morgan. Plus, Craig Fairbrass as Chef Zeph, and Stephen Ward as Mihawk. If you can't wait to hit the high seas, be sure to follow One Piece Netflix and Netflix Geeked on Instagram and Twitter. But don't set sail just yet, because our next title is something you're not gonna wanna miss. Yeah, coming July 14th, Evil Has Evolved. That's right, we're talking about Resident Evil, the legendary franchise redefined for Netflix. Set 14 years after a deadly virus caused a global apocalypse, as that happens, yeah. uh, Resident Evil sees Jade Wesker, the daughter of Albert Wesker, fighting for survival in a world overrun by the bloodthirsty infected. She's haunted by her past in New Raccoon City and her father's chilling connections to the Umbrella Corporation. But most importantly, uh, what happened to her sister? Wait, wait, what happened to her sister? Well, we'll see. <laughs> because right here at Geek Week, we're getting the very first trailer for Resident Evil. Ooh. They said the world would end in 2036. But they were wrong. The world ended a long time ago. Umbrella, a company besieged by a scandal is now trying to reinvent itself. The old umbrella made mistakes. <laughs> the things we're working on today, they're gonna change the world. Where it's safe and We have a problem. The drug contains the T-virus. The T virus can make monsters. Billions will die. Everyone keep your mouth shut. Oh my god. The old-timey music 
That makes everything really eerie. Why does it always make know. it so creepy? Yeah. It's such a good juxtaposition. It really is. But like, <laughs> Resident Evil had such a hold on like, when I was in high school, oh my God, like I feel like 2000s-ish is like when like Milo Jovovich just owned the world. But I gotta say like, this, the, the property always had so much potential and I just feel like, oh my God, like this, this looks like the best it. possible version of this story. I'm so excited. Um, Lance Reddick leads the cast as Albert Wesker and is joined by Ella Balinska and Tamara Smart. It also stars Paola Nunez, Sienna Agudong, and Adeline Rudolph. It seriously just gives us the best of what Resident Evil has to offer. Badass heroes, insane creatures, a fight for survival, and a deep mystery to unravel. Yeah, that'll be like, sick. I mean, you know how we love a mystery. We can also <laughs> reveal this creepy new poster for the show. Is that a liquor? That's badass. <laughs> It is. Uh, you can see the full new poster over at Resident Evil Netflix on Instagram. And if you want, you can dive deeper and find out more about Resident Evil and the Umbrella Corporation. Head to umbrellaisjoy.com. It's a very misleading <laughs> URL. Come on, it's a, it's a family-friendly corporation. <laughs> okay, this is our last big reveal of the day before we send you on your way. Jacob, do you want to take this one? Absolutely, Jay Stoops. Uh, we all know you loved the first German original series, Dark, as much as we did. The creators of the incredible, mind-bending German sci-fi drama are coming back with an even wilder series. We're talking about 1899, a brand new thriller that follows the mysterious circumstances around the voyage of an immigrant ship from Europe to New York. The passengers, all of different backgrounds and nationalities, are united by their hopes and dreams for a new century and their future abroad. Oh, this makes us so sad because they discover a second ship adrift on the open sea that had gone missing for months and their journey takes an unexpected turn. I don't know why they go to the you never, ship. You never take the detour. Don't like, you never take the detour. They should have just went straight there to the go. promised land and they would have been fine. It just, uh, you hate to see it happen <laughs> to good people. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Emily Beecham. I play Moira from 1899, and I can't wait for you to enjoy this show. I am Moira Franklin. Today is October 19th, 1899. Why do you think they're all here? They're all running away from something. Why else would someone want to go somewhere different? Wake up. People are oblivious to reality. They only see what they want to see. And all they have to do is shift their perspective to see the full scope of things. Hi, my name is uh, Janche. I'm the showrunner and head writer um, of Dark. Uh, of Dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Baran Bouda. I'm the showrunner, director and executive producer of 1899. Dark was not about action at all, but this is really an action show with a lot of violence, beating, running, screaming. Someone at Netflix told us about the volume technology. To be honest, after three seasons of Dark, we were a bit tired of doing it in a very traditional way. Netflix was super helpful from the beginning because they said this might be the future and could be really interesting for your project. How would you describe the volume to somebody who knows nothing about it? I tried to describe it to my son and I just said, oh. <laughs> it's like the biggest TV you'll ever see and we just act in front of it. It looks real. It really looks real. And that, of course, it's a huge help for us. So we don't have to travel to, to the desert, nor to the North Pole, nor to the glaciers and stuff. You can change that within a minute. It would be a totally different experience if we're doing this on green screen. It just illuminates, like, literally everything. You see the whole landscape in front of you and the lighting. and So you're really looking at the sea. It's a lot of prep work. It is a lot of frustration at the beginning because it is literally a new way of filmmaking. We get to be pioneers. We get to work on things we have no idea about. I think it's gonna be exciting to watch if the audience actually loves this new puzzle too, as they liked Dark. 
and if they will figure out what this show is actually really about. What's up with that black goo? <laughs> and the girl getting yanked back and the bodies everywhere? I gotta say. I thought this was about a ship. Uh, if you like mysterious period pieces, be sure to check out 1899. All right, Geeked Week. That's it for us. We covered so much. We laughed, we screamed, we cried. We dreamed all about these amazing upcoming Netflix series, both new and returning. But up next, we'll be chatting with the cast of The Sandman. Yes, The Sandman. And yes, you're finally finding out when it's coming. And Alicia Day sits down with the cast of The Umbrella Academy for an exclusive sneak peek at season three. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface of all the incredible content to come. Yeah, stay right here on Geek Week. Hello, fellow geeks. My name is Mason Alexander Park, and I play Desire in The Sandman, and here are five reasons why you should be excited to see the show. The first reason you should watch The Sandman is because I am in it. No, it's actually because the cast is pretty remarkable. They are an insane, sexy group of people. The second reason is the representation in this show is pretty outstanding. It is an iconically diverse group of people and I couldn't be more proud of the representation that is in the Sandman universe. The third reason is Neil freaking Gaiman. I mean, he is an iconic storyteller. This is his baby, this is his world, and I cannot wait for y'all to see what he has been cooking up with us. The fourth reason is it looks and it feels just like the comics. There was a point where we were bringing panels from the comic books onto set in order to compare and contrast as we were building out scenes. The fifth and final reason is the Endless. I think we are the ultimate dysfunctional television family and what better to watch. It is the comic book version of The Sopranos. Thanks for watching Netflix Geeked, and I'll see you in the Sandman. Sandman is the story of the place that we go when we close our eyes at night, and it's called The Dreaming. And The Dreaming is ruled by Morpheus. For 32 years, anybody who read Sandman read the comics. That world is ending. I'm here at Shepperton Studios, and I'm getting to see what happens when you bring dreams to life. I'm someone who is a, an obsessive Sandman fan. It's an awesome responsibility because it's something that is so beloved. I read the Sandman graphic novels, so I knew that I simply had to be involved in this project because Something truly unique was going to happen. The sets are vast. Great amount of detail and care has been put into how it's being brought to life. Holy shit. This is amazing. We're in the Undercroft. Our art department, our set decorators, our production designers, they are wizards. They are absolute magicians and to see what they've conjured here, it's like walking around inside your own dream. This is Sandman being made for people who love Sandman by people who love Sandman. And I cannot wait until people see this. Tonight, we will achieve what no one has even attempted. We will summon and imprison death. Here I give you a coin made from a stone. Here and I give you a feather Here pulled from an angel's wing. Here I give you the blood Here from my vein. Here we summon you together! Help! Death has family. Desire, destiny, despair, which 
one have I got? Dream. You're gonna need all the help you can get. Want to stay in the know about your favorite Netflix shows and films? You'll find news, videos, interviews and more on Taboom, the official Netflix site to help find and fuel your fandom. Stranger Things, The Grey Man, The Umbrella Academy, and more. Make Geek Week last all year on Netflix.com slash Taboom. Tonight, we will achieve what no one has even attempted. We will summon and imprison death. What's up, Geeked Week? I am Felicia Day, and I am so excited to be here for this very special Geeked Week panel where we will finally answer the long-awaited question, when is the Sandman coming to Netflix? Hey. Whoa. Death has family, desire, destiny, despair. We have some awesome surprises in store for you, but first, I couldn't do this panel without the three people I'm about to introduce. Alan Heinberg, showrunner for The Sandman, and the man we have to thank for finally bringing this incredible world to life. Tom Sturridge, who plays the enigmatic, endless dream, and Neil Gaiman, the brilliant mind behind the comic. Hi, Neil. Hi. <laughs> um, the first issues of Sandman came out over three decades ago, and they have had such an impact on pop culture. What do you think continues to be so resonant about the story, Neil? I think the story works because, you know, young Neil Gaiman had some kind of idea of what he was doing and was desperate to tell a story that would last and also was desperate to tell a story that would keep being printed in a comic month to month because he wanted to do this more than any, anything in the world. Um, and so it had everything that I loved and cared about, and it was willing not to be the same thing. And I think that weirdness, the fact that Sandman isn't just one thing, but it grows, it changes. If you like one bit of Sandman, you may or may not like the next bit, but you'll love the bit after that actually is responsible for why Three decades later, it still has life. People still care about the story. Alan, um, how did you approach adapting this comic to the TV series? Because it is, it's a beast of so many different things. I approached it primarily as a fan. I fell in love with it when I was in college. I was buying it monthly um, at, on, in comic book stores. So I steeped myself in the comics again. I read all of Neil's original scripts. And then I got to work very, very, very closely with Neil um, bringing it to life. So, but primarily as, a, as somebody who loved it and was desperate to see a version of it. Yeah, primarily as a fan. Tom, um, you are incredible too. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? What are the Endless and how do they fit into the story of the Sandman? Wow, what are the Endless? The Endless are a mysterious collection of beings, seven siblings. They're children of the cosmic entities, night and time. They're the anthropomorphic embodiment of certain forces, powerful human forces. In order of age, there's destiny, death, dream, destruction, desire, despair, and delirium. And what's amazing about them, and what I love about them, is that despite this kind of extraordinary, fantastical description, they are like a normal family in that they're riddled with dysfunction. And it's that dysfunction which propels our story and our narrative, and that's how they're a part of it. You know, when I first came to America, people would say to me, you know, we love Sandman, and, uh, and we love that you've made this dysfunctional family. And I'd never heard the term before. So I was like, what is a dysfunctional family? And they would explain, and eventually I went, oh, that's what in England we call a family. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which one have I got? Dream. You're gonna need all the help you can get. That perfectly sets us up to introduce our next round of guests. Vivienne Achampong, who plays Lucien the Librarian. J. 
Jenna Coleman, who plays demon hunting Joanna Constantine, Wanesu Samonyai, who plays Rose Walker, and Boyd Holbrook, who plays the Corinthian. Thank you so much for being here, so many of you. Um, Dream goes on a journey through many different stories this season. There is this huge cast, as we can see. Have you all been together like this all at once before? No. So. Mm -hmm. No. no. We, last time? We've just met. Yeah. <laughs> That's this incredible. Is it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the story is so varied and it goes so many places with so many actors. It's kind of funny to, to think you're such important characters and you've never met. That's blows my mind. <laughs> um, this cast, Alan, is just truly incredible. Can you talk about finding the right performers for these roles? Um, we had the most extraordinary casting directors, Lucinda Sison and Natasha Vincent, and Melly Nagler at Warner Brothers, who's in charge of casting there. And their tastes and their instincts were incredible, but mostly I think Neil did the work for us. Um, once word got out that, you know, the Sandman, this Neil Gaiman property that's been out for as long as it has and has as many fans as it has, once word got out, we had people coming to us saying, may I be in the Sandman? A lot of times we would start talking about, you know, who do we see in this role? And uh, we got very lucky in that we were talking about Jenna from the very, very beginning, because Neil and I are huge Jenna Coleman fans. <laughs> and we got very lucky um, that the pandemic, you know, allowed her the space in her, in her diary to join us. So it, it happened a lot of different ways, um, but we got very lucky. Yeah. Vivian, uh, Lucian is such a pivotal character for Dream. Can you talk about developing that dynamic with Tom? Uh, when I met Tom, he's so lovely and warm and open and then he just completely transforms into Morpheus and is incredible. And you can just tell that he really knows this character because he has just embodied him so beautifully. And it just made my job as an actor really easy. Um, he's a dream, no pun intended. But um, literally as an actor, a dream to work with because he just gives you so much, he's so generous. So it was a pretty easy thing for me to do with him. Boyd, the Corinthian is a fan favorite from the comics. Let's talk about those eyes and how you approach bringing the Corinthian to life. Who is he and what is his role in the show? Yeah, the Corinthian is basically the metamorphosis or the your worst nightmare in the matrix of the dreaming created by Morpheus. Um, when I first heard about this and talking to my friends about it, they were like, oh, you're gonna play the Corinthian. And it seemed like a larger than life, really outrageous character. But the more and I talked about it with Alan and, and Neil, it seemed like it was a person that you would welcome into your home. The, the sort of kindness and the ease that he would put you in. It was more Hannibal than like a, a, like a flamboyant Joker character. Um, and it was just very hard to calibrate being, you know, under these glasses and just how to, a lot of acting is done with your eyes, so that for me was something to adjust to. Yeah, well, there's a folksy quiet menace to you that is very, people are gonna be very excited to see. I'll take that as a compliment. It is, I'm from Alabama, I know folks are menace. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, you are no uh, stranger to epic franchises. What appealed to you about the role of Joanna Constantine? Just from the first reading of the script, um, it was the, the, the character just was so fleshed out, the voice, the every, everything kind of came to me straight away, like I, the idea of her being this, you know, this lone kind of ranger in the world with this tough exterior and her cynicism and, and kind of wryness and wit to kind of not let anybody close. Um, yeah, quite a tortured, a tortured soul, like with a big, compassionate heart hidden somewhere underneath. Yeah. And an amazing trench coat. And a great <laughs> trench coat. That was, that was the main reason, obviously. It's <laughs> good outfit. <laughs> but I do have a treat for you. In our first exclusive Geek Week reveal, we can share the brand new character posters for Joanna Constantine, the Corinthian, and some exclusive Sandman posters. Let us take a look. Hey. Ooh. Whoa. Gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. oh, what happened? Oh, the eyes. I love that. God, that looks incredible. Cool. Mm. Beautiful. It's the hell? Wow. Yeah. Out of noises. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, and the trench coat. How is it seeing that? Is that kind of cool to see it in real life? <laughs>
I'm very happy we've got the we've got the uh, the crucifix in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you're really work, rocking the trench coat. There's going to be a lot of cosplay, yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Uh, for those of you at home who want a closer look, you can check out these posters over on the Sam Man Official on Instagram and, of course, at Netflix Geeked. Uh, Vanessa, this is your first series role as Rose Walker, and she's such a pivotal character in The Sandman. Can you tease a little bit of your story and what it was like to work with Tom? Um, so Rose Walker is a regular 21-year-old who has lost her parents. And... Um, She's just alone in the world and she wants to find her brother, Jed. Um, she wants a sense of normalcy back in her life. Along the way, she meets, uh, she meets Morpheus and they work on you know, trying to get that going. And Tom is, Tom is uh, great, really great to work with. And what was really nice was how we played with um, Morpheus and like the relationship between them, the dynamic, how and the change that Dream had over their interaction. You guys have an incredible, incredible effect on each other, and it just blows my mind that this is your first role. It's a big, <laughs> big set to step into. How was that for you? Ah, it was great. This is a great, you know, series to have as my first um, series role. Nerve wracking in the beginning, and then I eased into it. The script was really. Um, it's in the beginning, even when I was auditioning, it was something that it made it really easy to play because the script just like laid it out so well. Yeah. Neil, how was it seeing all these actors bring your characters to life? Wonderful in all sorts of different ways. Sometimes it will be wonderful because it was exactly the thing that I've always had in my head. You know, Tom is Morpheus. Once you see him on the screen, you go, oh, yeah, that's the guy in the comics. That's what he apparently sounds like, and that's how he moves, because we haven't really seen him move. Sometimes it's deeper or weirder or just different, but it's always deeper or weirder or different in ways that make it more interesting, not less. Having Viv taking the character that, that, that Joe Orlando had created in the comics a long time ago and going, is there any reason at all that Lucien can't look like that but have pointy ears and going, none that we can think of, great. And it suddenly allows a level of honesty that we didn't have with these characters. You know, Lucien, she can get meaner or having Joanna Constantine watching what Jenna brought, this glorious, heartbroken, wounded, bitter sass to it. It was like, oh, that's exactly what I was trying to get into, you know, into the original com comic with John, only it's that, but more so. Yeah. So we have some fan questions for all of you. Alan, Noxie on Twitter asks, what's it been to bring something that's so beloved onto the screen? And what do you think viewers should expect new and old fans of the Sandman from the show? We wanted to give longtime fans, everything that they loved about Sandman, reading Sandman, and then more, more things that they, you know, stuff that happens off panel, you know, in the comic, just a deeper dive into these characters' lives and their feelings and their souls. A lot of our cast were new to the Sandman too. So we couldn't just operate within a fan bubble. We really needed to be able to tell the story for people who've never read Sandman before. And it was a pleasure to introduce people to this world and these characters for the first time. So you really don't need to have ever read the comics. But if you see the series and you enjoy it, we hope you'll run out and start reading because there's a lot to enjoy. I read them in college and I remember having a huge crush on Dream and then watching the episodes. I forgot most of it, but I'm like, oh yeah, there's going to be a lot of crushes. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> hey, uh, Tom, Mel on Twitter asks, OMG, are we going to see Dream's cool outfits? Question mark, question mark. O OMG, are we going to see Dream's cool outfits? Yeah. OMG, yeah. <laughs> OMG, <laughs> you'll see him without any outfit. That's what he What he doesn't wear in episode one. Exactly yeah. right. No, but Sarah Arthur, our costume designer, was extraordinary mm -hmm. and um, and very collaborative. Tom is very involved. Yeah. Well, what's what's exciting about Dream is is you know within our story he enters so many different worlds, and it was so important 
to uh, for him to carry the authority that he has within these worlds. How, who is Dream in hell? Like who is he in contemporary London? Who is he in his own throne room? And it was such an enormous act of imagination on her part and on all of our collaborators in trying to answer those questions, which are not questions that you get to do very often in a job like this. Like normally it's like, which are the coolest jeans? Um, <laughs> And yeah, it was magic. So OMG. Well, there's going to be a resurgence good. in crushed velvet outfits. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Jenna, Juliana, AKA Coleman's Dimple on Instagram asks, what can we expect from this new version of Joanna Constantine? Um, this new version of Joanna Constantine, um, I guess, um, if you would agree, like an, up, an upgrade. She's been upgraded in her. Her clientele, definitely. Her clientele, yeah, yeah. She's a bit posh. Yeah. 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 She operates in a world that's sort of at a higher level. I mean, the queen and the royal family are clients. Oh. So you can't really get any, any higher than that. Is or that lower. a spoiler? Sorry? Or lower. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. They'll cut that. Yeah. <laughs> also, did you know that your dimple had an Instagram handle? No, I did not. <laughs> you guys should get together sometime. Um, Swirly on Twitter asked Vivian, what is it like being literally the best character? Oh, wow. That's biased. <laughs> the best, I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, all the characters are the best, really. So, yep. they're being very kind. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have, you're a fan favorite. Um, Tom Cat Lady Bean on Twitter asked, "Is Dream's helm an actual prop? And if so, how did you make it?" Well, firstly, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from it, the bones it, of a dead god. From the bones of a dead god. It, it, it is a real prop. Um, and as Neil said, the most important thing, again, it, it was an act of imagination trying to create it. There are so many different images of it in, within the kind of the history of the comics. Um, but in Overture, um, the source of it is revealed, which is a battle that um, Dream has with a deposed god who has imprisoned him in the Dreaming um, with his love, Alianora. And it, it, he, he constructs a helmet out of uh, the god's skull and spine so he never forgets the defeat that he had when he was imprisoned. And what, so what's important was that the, the helm had that organic quality of a skull and a spine um, and wasn't this kind of, what it can sometimes be perceived as a sort of space helmet. Well, we can actually inspect whether it looks organic or not because we have the real helm here. Oh. Helm girl, oh. this. Oh. Wow. Thank you. Does that look like an organic spine of a dead god? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it does. Yeah. It's very bony. I'd yes. say nine out of 10. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's just going to sit here watching us for the rest of this. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, Boyd, Steven Rosario DZ on Instagram asks, is there a serial killer convention coming soon? Hmm? <laughs> to a town near you. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's, it's, it's going to be a full on national tour. <laughs> oh, great. <Yeah. laughs> Frightening. <laughs> Winesu Caravan City on Twitter asks, what scene was the most difficult? It was in, I think, episode eight, where I went into Hal's dream and I had to react to what I was seeing on stage um, because we hadn't put the effects in yet um, and he hadn't got a mask on yet. It was kind of hard to try and imagine what it looked like and how terrifying it was. Mm -hmm. So my reaction was a bit smaller than it probably would have if I saw that in real life. Neil, I am sad underscore underscore ch on Instagram. <laughs> Great handle. How did Neil Gaiman manage to make this story so grand and intimate at the same time? Grand and intimate, Neil. Uh, I think it gets to be grand mostly because at the end of the day, it's 3,000 pages long. So at that length, you become an epic, whether that was where you started out or not. But also, I think one of the things that I wanted to try and do when I was writing it was to tackle enormous beings, enormous ideas, and enormous time spans. But the only way that you can make anybody care about any of that stuff is by actually looking at human beings and what happens to them and people's hearts and people's minds and what happens to those. You know, Tom's huge story as Morpheus would be so much less interesting without a Rose Walker, um, without a Joanna Constantine. You need what happens to them. Um, and their influence on him is actually 
what drives season one. It's all about change and it's all about beings who are bigger and greater than gods and what they're going to become. This is a big reveal. Alan, Amanda Pike on Twitter asks, who is voicing Merv? That is a big reveal. And I'm going to tell you, we were thrilled to be able to ask and get Mark Hamill uh, to be the voice of Merv Pumpkinhead. And he's fantastic in it. Um, and he was such a pleasure to work with. Neil and I had a day with him on Zoom and he could not have been sweeter. Can I try this? Can I try that? What do you need? Let me do it again. I didn't like that one. I just, I, it just made me a new kind of fan of his. Just, I loved him. And his Merv is hilarious. That's the other thing I think that needs saying. Merv was always in the comics, the, on the one hand, a kind of comic relief, but on the other hand, also the voice of sanity, the voice of just going, this is actually kind of nuts. He gets to be that person, especially when arguing with Pat Oswalt's Matthew, so much fun. Fans are going to go crazy. Now it's time to answer the fan question we've gotten more than any other. When are we finally going to see the Sandman debut on Netflix? Alan, I'm gonna ask you to do the, the honors as well. All right, I have brought something special that I think can show it, if you don't mind, if I can, if we can just- Take over the stage. All right, let's, let's, let's roll the tape as they say. I'm the king of dreams, ruler of the nightmare realm. What are you doing here, Eddie? He's coming, isn't he? You. Morpheus. The Aneeromancer. You know the Sandman. He's a fairy story, Eddie. He's no fairy story. He's back. Good to know. Forgive me, sire of the palace, the realm. They are not as you left them. With you gone, the realm began to decay and crumble. The dreams and nightmares no longer seem to recognize their monster. You will remind them. He's free. He's out of his cage. seems so cliche, but epic. Yeah. 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 It's really epic. The dreaming looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alan, it must be so long coming to this point. How do you feel? I, I cannot wait for fans and for new fans, uh, people who've never heard of Sandman before, to watch these incredible actors tell this man's incredible story. I could not be more excited to share it with everybody and have everybody finally see it and fall in love the way I've fallen in love, so. Yeah. Neil? What do you think fans are going to think? I think fans are going to be incredibly excited because this is Sandman. It's taken us 34 years to get Sandman on screen. I have killed off so many bad Sandmans on the way. The, the bodies of so many dead Sandman movies <laughs> have been buried um, to do it right and to get to the point where now Netflix would have the confidence in us and assemble amazing actors, amazing people to do it. And it's Sandman. And that's what I think people are going to be responding to. The thing they love, it's on the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, as a fan, you definitely did it right. I could keep talking to you, all of you all day, but unfortunately that is all the time we have for today's special Geek Week panel for The Sandman. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us at Geek Week this year. And fortunately, we don't have to wait much longer until The Sandman hits Netflix. We finally, finally, finally can announce that it will be coming to a stream device near you on August 5th. So we will be back with this fabulous crew for a special episode of The Sandman Unlocked, where we will go into all 
full spoilery details. For now, I'm Felicia Day, and be sure to keep watching Geeked Week all week long for more exciting reveals. Bye! Hey everyone, it's Elliot. Just wanted to say thank you for all your continued love and support. We have the absolute best fans in the world. And what we wanted to do is answer some of your most burning questions. Hey, what's up everyone? It's David. It's Tom. Hi everybody, it's Emmy. Hello, it's me, Robert. Hey everybody, it's Aiden. Hey everyone, it's Ritu. Shooting the final scene of season two was incredibly fun. It was really funny. Justin Min had to wear a certain specific kind of hair and the whole time I just kept calling him Baby Diego. It was really nice to, to be able to actually look at Justin H. Min in the face for the first time in two years. We didn't know all the details. So the surprise about Ben at the end was a surprise for us. Uh, confusing because none of the actors that had been uh, cast as Sparrows this year were actually cast yet. So there was just silhouettes. Don't start now, I do leave up. 433 by John Cage. It's a banger. Creep by Radiohead. Smash Mouth, World Star, All Star. I think it's My Way by Frank Sinatra. Stan Eminem. Fun, fun. Exhilarating. Chaotic. Debauchery and or shenanigans. Chaotic? No, no, no. Hilarious. Hot. No, no, no. Destruction. S Club 7. There are seven psychopaths in the movie Seven Psychopaths. Sins. Seas. Chocolates. Dwarves. Seven dwarfs. Wonders of the world. Umbrellas. Uh, golden brown. It's either Don't Stop Me Now or Here Comes the End. The Scissor Sisters. I did it my way. Everybody, Backstreet Boys. Mm. Backstreet's back, all right. Uh, Backstreet Boys. You know, that's probably everyone's answer. Morning bird! Oh, ha, ha. She is a morning bird, okay? Night owl. Morning. Morning bird. Night owl. Both. Morning bird catches the worm. Me? Or David? Or Aiden? Justin. Aiden. I certainly do it a lot, so it could be me. <sighs> me, Tom, and Elliot, 100%. If the three of us are in a scene, that's a wrap. We never get it done. No one. Me? Yeah, no one. Aiden's pretty good at not breaking. Aiden is pretty, I have to say, clearly the most professional of us all. What else is new? Hey, thanks so much, Umbrella fans. Thank you so much, Umbrella fans. Thanks so much, Umbrella fans. We love you. We love you, and we can't wait to show season three. We truly can't wait to share season three with you. This isn't your home. What are you talking about? This is the Umbrella Academy. This is the Sparrow Academy. When we jumped here, we created a time paradox. Our little paradox brought forth a freaking Kugelblitz. What the hell is a Kugelblitz? Essentially, we're screwed. Oh, yeah. Everybody else can see Ben, right? Yeah, and he's a complete dickhead. They're all dickheads. Dickheads who can fight. The next person to say dickhead is getting a punch to the throat. Dickhead. 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 We caused a paradox, and that paradox is swallowing things. How long do we have? Four, maybe five days before the rest of existence is blitzed. Not to mention, we've been replaced by a bunch of blobs and cubes and birds and shit. Your team is good, but I don't think you're better than me. I ended the world twice. And you, you're just meat and spandex. Dad didn't adopt us as babies, but those babies still existed here. So, if you ever see your other self... Kill them. Sleep with them. Avoid them. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh, come on, as if you wouldn't climb Luther Mountain. Oh, yeah!
If I kill you, do we get our Ben back? What the hell did you just say? What are you, their mascot? More like their ringer. It's a ballroom blitz Looking for you. Spoiler alert. We're speeding, sound speed. Here we go. Hua. Hua. That'd be a weird. The thing. Real Housewives of the Umbrella Academy mm. reunion. Here we go. Mm -hmm. This isn't your home. What are you talking about? This is the Umbrella Academy. This is the Sparrow Academy. Shit. Hello, hello, Geek Tweak. I am Felicia Day, and I am so excited to be here for this very special Geek Tweak panel for the Umbrella Academy. Yes, finally, all those purple umbrellas in the chat have paid off. We are going to treat you to some exclusive first looks at season three in just a little bit, but want to know what's even more of a treat? I have gathered up as many of the fabulous cast behind the Umbrella Academy as I could to share those first looks with you. So without further ado, let's welcome our panel. Tom Hopper, who plays the number one in our hearts and for the Umbrella Academy, Luther. <laughs> David Castaneda, who plays Master of Knives and the Brelli's number two, Diego. <laughs> Amy raver Lampman, who I heard a rumor plays the fabulous number three, Allison. <laughs> Aiden Gallagher, who plays the well overdue for not having apocalypse crisis as a deal with, number five. Hey. Justin H. Min, who plays Ben, now uh, number two of the Sparrow Academy. We're going to have to talk about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Genesis Rodriguez, as the newest member of our cast, the number five of the Sparrow Academy, Sloan. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you also to everyone who responded to at the Umbrella Academy and at Netflix Geeks with your fan questions for this panel. We got so many of them. We will do our best to answer as many as we can throughout the show. So season two ended up with quite a cliffhanger. Can you guys talk about uh, where things pick up for season three for each of your characters? Tom, do you want to start? Um, well, I guess we start with seeing the Sparrow Academy, right, and then yeah. dealing with uh, the fact that this is not our timeline anymore, right? So I think for Luther, I think the pressure's off for him now, initially, right? I think the until any problems start occurring, he thinks, well, great, well, we can just kind of get on with our lives here then, because we don't have any pressure, we can just crack on. So, uh, yeah, that's certainly where it starts for, for Luther and until as I say, problems start happening. Yeah, pretty much immediately, right? Yeah. <laughs> Emmy, where is Allison in this moment when you start up season three? Uh, I think everyone's a little jumbled by the fact that we've come home to find out that our home is not our home and there's strangers on the balcony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David, you, David seems pretty, a you, your character seems pretty aggro when you see everybody. Yeah, Are you yeah, ready, yeah. To, ready to start fighting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so sort of an identity crisis. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but I think Allison's priority, the reason that she, she agreed to go with the rest of the family and leave the 60s was to get home to her daughter. So that's her first priority and her only priority to be honest yeah as any mother would yeah any good mother yeah, yeah. i guess not Absolutely. to judge anybody's mother <laughs> sorry mom <laughs> <laughs> Aiden, how is five feeling when you see this i mean you probably have seen enough disaster to you know fill the whole garbage can what are you thinking right now when you see uh, this other team i think he's flustered i mean he's seen his fair share of crazy timeline and whatnot so he keeps an eye on the briefcase but uh yeah, it's it's in the back of his mind whether or not to use that because who knows this might be fine. Yeah, it might just be that uh, we're out of a home, in which case just I don't know find a find, find a, a realtor one. or something. Exactly, a yeah. realtor. Or a ball of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Zillow. <I've been. laughs> or a ball of twenty. Now, Justin, you are on the other side of the the world. You're facing off against your old Brellies. How does that feel, traitor? Oh. Wow. She went there. She went there. Immediate. Starting this yeah. interview Just. off spicy. Uh, <laughs> we are set up where we're having a typical day at the Sparrow Academy, our beautiful home, and then suddenly yeah. out of nowhere these strangers appear and they're looking at Ben in this odd way. So it's I think he's startled and also suspicious of who these people are and why they're here. 
Yeah. Alternate universe, alternate academy. Let's <clears throat> talk about the Sparrows. Genesis, what do we need to know about the Sparrow Academy in general? The Sparrow Academy is a completely different family, um, equally as dysfunctional. Um, but they really are crime fighters. They're organized, they have trained their entire lives, mm -hmm. and they've dedicated their lives to stopping crime. And they're kind of a, um, they're kind of a big deal. Um, <laughs> they're very popular. Very well buggy. Very well buggy. Um, they're very popular. And, Lots uh, of billboards. Lots yeah. of billboards. They're a brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a brand. So mm -hmm. they've succeeded where the Brillies maybe haven't as far as marketing. Wow. And wow. Maybe, I don't yeah. Billboards know. should Ouch. say we're kind of a big deal. We're kind yeah. of a big deal. We're kind of a big deal. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have our first sneak peek for Geek Week. We brought everyone an exclusive clip, so I hope you're oh. excited about that. Let's take a look. Big one is strong but slow, possibly stupid. Some sort of simian hybrid. Who took the little jumpy guy? Me. Just gave him a spanking and sent him to school. Hello! The skinny one is their weak link. Unless hiding behind couches shouting, Where's my daddy? It's a superpower. They disrespected us, Marcus. We need to be out there finding these freaks and taking them out. Oh, you mean like this? I haven't faced decent enemies for years. This could be good for us. Good for business. But only if we're smart with our next move. Yes. Okay, can we <laughs> can we not? You clearly had a trainer too. You you're you're ripped. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry wow. to bring it up. I'm just <laughs> It gets me we not. love this for you. I, guess, I really do. Uh, yes, they uh, they had all of us mm -hmm. on, on quite intense training regimens yes. before we started the show, and so it was sort of nice to get into the character in a, in a physical way, in a way that yeah. we haven't been able or I haven't been able to do previously for the show. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure the fans will appreciate it. Your dedication. <laughs> David will, and that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, I always do. Kirby <laughs> on Twitter asks for Justin, what was it like to work with a new group of people with new powers? Yeah, Justin, what was that like? <laughs> it was wonderful. I mean, I think we had chemistry right away. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, it, it almost felt like working on a new show. I was playing a sort of a new character with a new cast, and... We got to Zoom a number of times before starting filming, and I just felt like it really worked immediately, and yeah. uh, it's so lovely. It's so yeah, lovely. Of course, you know, love yeah. these guys as well, but... <laughs> Did you miss it? <laughs> <laughs> At all? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Emmy's face seems a little skeptical. <laughs> she does not like where this is going. <laughs> the thing is, we so rarely got to actually do scenes with him. Yeah, you know? it's mostly so just jealousy. He was just around. Like, they actually got to look him in the eyes. Yeah. We weren't allowed to for two seasons because oh. he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so flip side. But yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what's up with the cube? Christopher the cube? Is he like a good roommate? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> He's very opinionated, yeah. I do have to say. Mm -hmm. um, follow up to all of you, actually. Who would win in a fight, you or your number opposite? So like Tom, uh, Luther versus Marcus, Ooh. who would Ooh. win? <clears throat> Tight. Really? Very tight. It'd be very tight. I'm going just for my own <laughs> ego. Tight. Tight. Okay. Uh, but he's probably a touch faster than, than sluggish Luther. Mm -hmm. So maybe. Uh, All right. What about Diego versus Ben? I, I think I think Ben would win. You know, uh, but Ben would cry. <laughs> he'd win, but he'd cry. I was gonna say you would cry. No, but you would win though. I would, I would cry. win, so, <laughs> and you would cry. Because, because, hold on, he's emotional in victory. <laughs> because the knife will cut your tentacles, dude, and it would hurt you. Okay. It would make you cry. Yeah, that would suck. I, I could see that, but I think I would, Ben would kill Diego before the knives could even come out. I wouldn't oh. die. Wow. It's like a tennis match over here. I'm like, wouldn't die. Okay. Why wouldn't you die? Because Diego's lovable, dude. You can't kill Diego. Oh okay. <laughs> so you're saying that Ben's not so lovable? Is he? No, I'm, he's terrible. Oh. He's terrible. He's a dickhead. <laughs> Are we talking real life? Oh, or right no, now? Ben. Oh, ben. Okay, ben okay, of okay, course. No, Justin's a little marshmallow. He's like. Oh, oh. oh. that's a compliment. Oh. Um, Emmy, Allison versus Faye. Who would oh, win? Oh, man. Um. I think Allison. Absolutely. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> She's the most powerful of them all. Yeah, yeah. you just have to say three words. Yeah. yeah. 
I was trying. I was. I was thinking it from the physical aspect, mm. just like actual hand-to-hand combat. Mm. Oh, punching. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. But but also, yeah. I do. If think you're actually Alice, using Alice's your power. power is crazy. Yeah. That's really yeah. incredible. Mm-hmm. So I yeah, I'd probably say Alice. Okay, you take her out. Um, Aiden versus Genesis. We have you can mm. do it right now. No, no, no. It's not what you think. It's a game of checkers. <laughs> <laughs> I think five would defuse the conflict rather than fight. Like he, you know, he, talk it out. Well, he talk it out. Or see just... if you guys are actually a threat or just like you're in our house. Mm-hmm. We weren't expecting guests. We need to prepare before. Over right a there. drink. Yeah. So you would you, ne- you would negotiate your way out of any conflict. I would. Uh, I think five would make sure he understood the scenario before he starts killing people. Okay. Oh, wow. You've never done that before. <laughs> you just kill people. <laughs> Am I just seeing the same show? I, I, <laughs> I check like the guest list who's in the boardroom before oh, okay. I head in with the axe. Okay. Before the massacre. Yeah. 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 Just forget the whole Assassin's Guild thing. I'll make sure everyone's <laughs> <laughs> But um, if I wasn't quick, she would totally win. Yeah. He's yeah. just got that blink thing, so he has, he's got to be quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Gravity gal. Gravity. The Brellies evolve so much each season, and the Sparrows certainly are a new challenge. What different sides of your characters are you most excited to explore in season three? Tom, let's start with you. I think Luther lets go of a lot of his hang-ups. Um, so he's more fun to play this year. He's, he's uh, I, th- I feel like this year he gets to play out his missed teenage years a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'll say that, yeah. I'm sorry, whenever I look at you, you look so skinny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost startling, like, you know, like one of those 80s videos where they like. just squish people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's really yeah, yeah. <laughs> This guy could use a leg day, that's all I could say. Um, David, what about you? <laughs> David, what about you, your character in season three? Uh, I think they're bigger than mine. <laughs> Even more. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I think it's more about, um, you know, he's always wanting to save or prove himself. And now he's not at home anymore, and he, there's another academy. So mm-hmm. he's he's a bit lost. He doesn't know what to do. So he wants to just focus his whole attention into like trying to get the Sparrow Academy out. Mm-hmm. It, obviously, you know, surprises happen that lead him in a different direction. That you know, kind of helps him find purpose. You know, so he's kind of purposeless at the beginning. He doesn't know what to do with himself, and that's kind of the journey that he goes into. I think until you know, the end of season three. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Emmy, where does Allison go? I mean, you've been a lot of places the yes. first couple seasons. Yes. Where are you going from here? Um, I think Allison's got some trauma that she needs to to kind of deal with and, and move through and work through. And so I think that's a lot of, a lot of her season is kind of coming back from the 60s and dealing with what she experienced and witnessed and lived through and survived, to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. Um, And that affects her emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, So I think that's that's a lot of her season is kind of dealing with the aftermath of coming back from the being a black woman in the 60s in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of trauma. Yeah, a lot. Aiden, where's Five going from here? I mean, you've you've had to manage so much, so much time travel. What are you just hoping for in this Uh, season? He goes straight to the horse races and kicks back. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he's he's looking for a break, you know. He's been going at it nonstop for like two weeks now, so. (laughs) So true. Yeah, Yeah, tough two weeks. A total of 20 days. Wow. When you summarize the show like that, it's a little scary. Um, Captain Christine asks for Justin, how did you choose what traits to bring for this version of Ben? Is this Ben a different Ben than we've seen before? Absolutely. I think a lot of what Steve Flackman and I, Steve Flackman, our showrunner, and I talked about was sort of playing around with this whole idea of nature versus nurture and how much of um, sort of the essence of Ben we wanted to keep and how much he would change because of this sort of different environment that he grew up in. And I think Ben, as his essence, is a very impressionable person. So the nat- nurture part of it plays a much, much larger role in his life than for potentially other characters. So to grow up in an environment that felt more militant and you know, training to be a, a crime fighter in all of these ways, it really toughened him up in a in a way that he wasn't in the previous timeline. He sort of has a large chip on his shoulder, so that's mm-hmm. something that we wanted to bring into play as well. Yeah, um, your dad doesn't feel very nurturing this season. Absolutely. <laughs> Is oh, he, he ever, ne- though? He, uh, Is he ever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Genesis, how do the sparrows serve as foils for the Brellies? I mean, they're matched power-wise, but are they matched personality-wise too? Do you have anything in common with five? Um, Personality-wise, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say uh, we're two different fives. I believe, but I think that there are some matches within both of the families for sure. Mm -hmm. um, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think Luther has anything in, in common with Marcus? And I think Marcus is the leader that Luther always wanted to be. Mm. Mm. Wow. Deep. Ooh, deep. 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 Yeah. 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 Deep. Allison, anything with Faye? Do you have any match up there? Um, their love of birds. Uh, <laughs> 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 Why not? I was like, 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 I was just didn't make the cut. Um, they're both sassy as hell. Yeah. I think they're both very, very strong, very, very opinionated and, and, um, and sassy. But I also think that they are, they do have this ability to, like, to put themselves, put their family first mm -hmm. and kind of do what needs to be done for the greater good of the family. Yeah. I think mm. both, both threes are kind of good at being kind of like the pillar of that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. kind of the, the center. Yeah. And then Diego and Ben, you guys are just resentful. <laughs> you, have, you seem to have that in common, resentment. I think you're everything that uh -oh. Ben wants. You're everything that... <laughs> <laughs> uh oh <laughs> what? Well, exactly what Tom said about Luther, right? Wh what? D ben is everything Diego wants to be. I feel like they're both in the same place. They are, they are. I think so. They both have a chip on their shoulder. They both, they both have, have the number two chip. Yeah. I, think yeah. the, I think the difference is that like, uh, Diego is uh, not, he's, he's not afraid of, of making a fool out of himself. You know, he really will go there, you know? So he's, but yeah, I think very much both have a, like a, a imposter syndrome. And wanting to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fifth Umbrella on Twitter asked, if your character could have any of the Sparrow's powers or the Sparrow's vice versa, which would they pick? Emmy, you wanna start? Um, my answer has always been the same for three seasons of the show. I think uh, I would keep Allison's power. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. yeah. Aiden? I've been saying for years that gravity manipulation would be a really cool power to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it appeared on the show and I was really I happy to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah very cool. Justin? I've grown attached to the tentacles, yeah. so literally, you love. Wait, would, literally also. I would, yeah, literally. I would keep mine. Um, My Octopus Teacher is also a great documentary oh, on yeah. Netflix. Yes, so. also on Netflix. Buddy. Love, yeah. love a plug. <laughs> Check it out on Netflix. Super depressing, but inspiring. David, what about you? Wait, what's Marcus's power? He's the same, same as Luther. Yeah, super it's the same. same. Super strength. Just, just being the agility. Exactly Smolder the is. Right? Yeah. The, the, yeah, we, yeah, we're literally the same. Yeah. Okay, so it's so you, it's kind of identical then. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the you same. Although Luther has no real obvious power in the show. Just strong. I would argue. <laughs> He can eat a lot. Yeah, he'd be, I yeah. lifted up a tractor in you season two. Yeah. He wrote the That's Wikipedia true. on the and, and still then, with a slight struggle. But you're still strong. <laughs> I mean, you lifted me up in season one. I lifted you up. Remember? Yeah. When we came in. When was like, that? So, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah. so were, I'm not like yeah. crazy, yeah. crazy strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I thought was funny because the knives even punctured your arm. Remember that? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What's I was like, what's my power? <laughs> what was the question? I, I, I plead the That's fifth on that That's abundantly clear. You don't you, know the question. Would you keep I, your powers or would you trade them for another? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll keep mine. Okay, you keep yours. Genesis? Uh, I really like my power mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, I really love Lila's power because she gets all yeah. the powers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Lila. That feels like a cheat. Yeah, I yeah. never say that because well, it feels on. like a cheat. She yeah, also she's... gets none of them if we're not in the area. Yeah. Well played. But then doesn't need them. Right. Until she's in our area. True. Right. Huh? Until she's amongst us, she doesn't need the power. Right? So when she's off on her own, she's like, I don't need it right, right now. She doesn't but want it. when she's fighting us, that's when she needs it, and she can use any of them. Mm. Okay. That's like wishing for more wishes, but okay. Mm. And you already answered. Would you <clears> want to be more like Marcus? Just like maybe more, you can mm. flip at least. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, I've I mean, experienced two seasons of like a mediocre version of Marcus. Okay. So like just upgrading to Marcus, it's sort of like it doesn't serve me. <laughs> it's Whereas, boring. I think Cassie's power is quite good. Being able to yeah, that's quite fun as well. Wait, has so that been revealed? Make... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just do it. Okay. Can, can <laughs> oh, well, here's yeah. a question: Can Jamie see the other person's yeah. dream? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so she can experience it. She can be whatever she wants it to be. Yeah, that's fun. Which is cool. 
Okay. Yeah. So it's a fun power. <clears throat> well, we couldn't let a season of the Umbrella Academy go without, you guessed it, Twitter emojis. You will get a special surprise depending on whether or not you're using light or dark mode. So go take a look. With the sparrows, we also get a fan favorite setting introduced in season three, Hotel Obsidian. In season one, we had the Umbrella Mansion. In season two, we were in the 60s. What does this new setting of Hotel Obsidian add to the story, David? Well, I, I mean, the, just the production of it is just <clears throat> insane. When we got to walk in the first time, it was like you were transported into a different world. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful how they were able to put it. And we shot throughout that whole thing. So it, it pretty much became the backbone to the whole story. Yeah. Genesis, did the Sparrow spend a lot of time at this hotel? Or is this something, something you knew, knew you find out in the season? Yes, there's quite a bit, mm -hmm. quite a bit yes. in that new space. And it, I mean, really what they were able to do it, set wise it was actually incredible and yeah. with some like um interesting materials too wasn't there like a paper cup holder yeah. oh yeah that was disguised as wall and there were, we're like, very what? green on oh, the umbrella yeah. academy okay. yeah, yeah. We make our sets out of recycling yeah it was like, <laughs> very impressive it's from coffee shops it's very impressive yeah tom how many yelp stars would you give this hotel <clears throat> oh yeah. mm. tricky well i think it looks a little tired the obsidian <laughs> it looks like one of those older vegas hotels okay oh, you know yeah. stained carpet mm -hmm. lots of not like this smoke stained ceilings <laughs> yeah not like um, this. used to the soho that's why yeah I, I guess, uh, <laughs> i've been spoiled guys. Yeah. well that perfectly sets us up for another exclusive clip reveal from season three premiere let us take a look Hotel Obsidian, I missed you, you slutty old dame. Absorb her. Absorb her into your bosom. You know, because back in her heyday, she played host to world leaders Roosevelt, Gandhi, Stalin, Gorbachev, Castro, King Olaf of Norway, one of the Kim Jongs, Tito, Dalai Lama, Elvis, and not one, but two Kardashians, allegedly. But now, where are you going? I gotta make a call. Nowadays, she's just flop house, party house, for those of us not looking to be judged by society's rules and norms. You mean a place to hide? Exactly. It's perfect. And the best part of it is, she's going to look after us. No questions asked. Never have. Right? Come on. I may have questions. Yeah, me too. This place is weird. Seems like Klaus if he recommends a hotel, it's probably not going to be a good experience, huh? <laughs> it's tricky, though. In that moment, we needed some place that they couldn't find us. So actually, mm -hmm. Klaus was the perfect person mm -hmm. to recommend a hotel because we needed to go to the, the most unlikely space. Yeah, but you're right. The, the production design is pretty astonishing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Well, we have time for a few more questions from fans. Uh, D2007 underscore underscore on Instagram for Tom. Who is your favorite new character of season three? Oh, uh, actually, uh, I would probably say the new Ben. Ooh. Yeah, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> it's, blushing. Yeah. It's pretty great. It's great, because it's such a, it's so different to the Ben that we knew as the Umbrella, so. Yeah. I think it's just such a great shift in the show and it brings a whole new dynamic to, to well, also to your, your, as an actor as well. I think it was brilliant, mm -hmm. you know, working with, with Justin this year, it was, it was so much fun. And uh, yeah, so I can't wait for people to see it. It's gonna, it's gonna be good. Sloan Hargreaves on Twitter asked, David, how many yeah. knives do you think Diego owns? 17. <laughs> there it is, <laughs> that's the 17? Is that how yeah. many you have on you? Yeah. Is wow. that and that's all you okay, have? Okay, but what do you have in storage? Like that's all I have. You Mind have you, you have no storage everything now, got right? Destroyed. Yeah. You mm. must be online constantly looking at knives. I'm very much that's making like sure it. that I don't lose any of them. 
You got yeah. fancy like, mentions. So there's like a, yeah. a scene right after whatever <laughs> fight scene where you're just picking up knives? Yeah, well, it's between the scenes where I'm picking up the knives. You right. know, it's like the boring stuff. No one wants to see me pick up knives. They want that to see me throw them. That would be a fun blooper reel. Sorry to just <laughs> go off. I'm just very curious. That's no, fine. Uh, Sorry. No, keep going. I love knives. <laughs> wow. Especially sharp she ones, She loves right? coloring. Will Ferrell and Ryan Gosling right came out with a knife. Came. <laughs> I know what to get you for Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> you know, on Twitter, for Emmy asks, who do you think is the most powerful amongst the siblings? Wow. Oh. Hmm. Sparrows and umbrellas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Both? Can, yeah. You can open it up. All, you can all siblings? People. Yeah. Um... I mean, I, I think I would probably say Lila, right? Because she's a chameleon and she can take on any power. So it, you're always going to be matched by your equal if you mm -hmm. go up against her, which is pretty dangerous. Pretty great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chiquetti on Instagram asks, Aiden, do you think you would get along with your character this season? Hmm. Uh, I'm way too silly for five. He would have none of me. <laughs> <laughs> As we just saw with the knife conversation. He I would not love to that. see that. <laughs> I would love to see that conversation. He'd wait for the coffee to arrive, he'd enjoy it, and then calmly walk out. If I didn't annoy him too much first, and then he would, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he'd like me. <laughs> he'd be, he'd be curious, he's like, who's this guy who looks exactly like me? Are we twins who this other one didn't have powers and is just, I don't know. <laughs> Captain Caitlin on Twitter for Justin, how does the Umbrella Academy respond to this very different Ben? Ooh, they're very conflicted because obviously he looks like their Ben, but he acts very differently. And there are many looks shared throughout the show, uh, especially in the first few episodes where they sort of see their Ben, but it's not who they think he is anymore. Yeah, that must be hard as an actor when you guys have worked for so many years together being one person for you to remove yourself from them and be a completely different person. Absolutely, but on the flip side, as, as was pointed out, it was nice to finally look my fellow actors in the eyes for the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah. It was, it was, it was really likewise, yeah. 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 Liam on Twitter for Genesis asks, what is your favorite episode you film for next season? Ooh. Ooh. No spoilers. No spoilers. I can't, I can't <laughs> see, I you know, can that, I can't really You can get a number. You can get a number. Yeah. Uh, one mm -hmm. and eight. Ooh, <laughs> good numbers. Before I let you go, we're gonna play a little game I like to call spoilers without context, okay? So the rules are very simple. I want you to share something cryptic. Uh, there's a massive spoiler that only will make sense once the fans have seen the whole season. So it could be a sound, oh. it could be a gesture, a facial expression, oh, a word, God. anything that uh, gives you a, a, a clue in context only if you've seen the season. Tom, I'm sorry. Oh, I knew you were gonna oh, wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Yikes. Fui. I have something. You have something? Go. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, Laying on us. Roll up the carpet. I'll just leave it at that. Oh, um, I'll okay. say, I'll say, I'm going to need my bow tie. Emmy? Bacon. Bacon? Yes. <laughs> Bacon. Bacon? Bacon. Yeah. That's a good one. Aiden? Ah. No, Justin. Justin, uh, anything? Food. So now I'm being inspired by food. Shrimp cocktail ah. and lamb chops. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Definitely. Nice. nice. Lamb. Oh. Very yeah. smart. Okay. Yeah. Lamb. lamb. Okay. Lamb. Okay, Aiden. I'm just gonna say the word breaks. Look at the past stuff that's already come out, oh. and uh, if you look for the word breaks, uh, nice. you'll you'll find a, a mild spoiler that won't make sense yet. Okay, thank you so much. Everybody got it. Oh, If I kill you, do we get our Ben back? What the hell did you just say? What are you, their mascot? More like their ringer. It's a ballroom Consider me sufficiently teased. I could keep talking to you all day, but unfortunately that's all the time we have for oh. today's special Geeked Week panel for the Umbrella Academy. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us for Geeked Week this year. Fortunately, we don't have to wait much longer until the Umbrella Academy hits Netflix on June 22nd. It's near my birthday, so thank you very much. Yeah. 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 You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
be we're in yourself. <laughs> and we will be back with this fabulous crew for a special episode of our Netflix Geeked After Show, The Umbrella Academy Unlocked, where we will go into full spoilery details after the season premieres. All right. See you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Getting ready for a new season of The Umbrella Academy? You'll find news, videos, interviews, and more on Tadoom, the official Netflix site to help find and fuel your fandom. From rehashing the finale to rewatching the latest trailer, find more information than the commission on Netflix.com slash Tadoom. This isn't your home. What are you talking about? This is The Umbrella Academy. This is The Sparrow Academy. When we jumped here, we created a time paradox. Our little paradox brought forth a freaking Kugel Blitz. What the hell is a Kugel Blitz? Essentially, we're screwed. Oh, yeah. Everybody else can see Ben, right? Yeah, and he's a complete dickhead. They're all dickheads. Dickheads who can fight. Next person to say dickhead is getting a punch to the throat. Dickhead. 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 We caused a paradox, and that paradox is swallowing things. How long do we have? Four, maybe five days before the rest of existence is blitzed. Not to mention, we've been replaced by a bunch of blobs and cubes and birds and shit. Your team is good, but I don't think you're better than me. I ended the world twice. And you, you're just me and spandex. Dad didn't adopt us as babies, but those babies still existed here. So, if you ever see your other self... Kill them. Sleep with them. Avoid them. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh, though? come on, as if you wouldn't climb Luther Mountain. Oh, yeah! If I kill you, do we get our Ben back? What the hell did you just say? What are you, their mascot? More like their ringer. It's a ballroom blitz, man. Been looking for you. Spoiler alert. Do I have to? Your grandson's birthday only happens once a year. So does Geek Tweak. Stranger Things panel starts in 15. Sorry, it's Geek Tweak. Netflix Geek Tweak 2022, June 6th to 10th. I'm from a lineage thousands of years old of the best monster hunters to ever walk the earth. Even on good days, I feel like I still don't fit in. Like everyone else has it all figured out. Oh yeah, that. I haven't told anyone, of course. You are a legacy vampire of made vampires with love. See their reflection in a mirror. We're hunters. More importantly, you're my daughter. Which is why we've decided you're ready for your first kill. Here's to killing monsters. In a world of make your body is changing. Yeah, my body. But very soon, you are going to have to make your first kill. Hi. It's Juliet, right? Yeah. You're Calliope? Well, Cal's good. Who are you, Calliope? Where'd you come from? Addicted to loving you, yeah. how does it feel? You're nothing like the monsters I grew up hating. I just want to live my life. Can't be together. It won't work. I've forbidden you from seeing her. We're not supposed to be. I know my feelings for you are real. Juliet and every legacy in Savannah dies tonight. Run now! I'll kill for you. We won't have a problem. We will always have a problem. I had 
had to choose between you and my family, I choose my family. What about us? Faced everyone, monster and human, who tried to come between us. We got this. I'll kill for you. Pogo, get off the couch. <laughs> Want to go for a walk? Uh -huh. Hey, buddy, come on, fetch. Pogo, what's this? Come to Papa. <laughs> Pogo, we all want to watch Geek Week. Netflix Geek Week 2022, June 6th to 10th. We have our first sneak peek for Geek Week. We brought everyone. Never should have talked about it. Greetings, bloodthirsty babes. I am Princess Weeks, part-time vampire witch hybrid and full-time host, writer, gamer, and lover of all things geek. Welcome to Most Presents Vampire Pride. Most is Netflix's destination for all things LGBTQ storytelling on Instagram and Twitter. Now, this Friday, June 10th, marks the release of the highly anticipated teen vampire drama series, First Kill. First Kill centers on teen vampire, Juliet, who has yet to bite her first victim as she falls for her classmate, Calliope. Little does little Juliet know, Calliope and her family are vampire hunters. So, will their love for each other be strong enough or will their family's expectations prevail? To be honest, you had me at leading lesbian vampires. <laughs> I can feel my teeth sharpening already. Take a bite out of this exclusive clip from the Netflix show, First Kill. Hi. Hi. Wow, okay. Not wasting any time, huh? Sorry, I'm socially awkward. <laughs> um, and I've wanted to do that for a while now. And would like to do it again. Um. Okay. I'm Imani Lewis. And I'm Sarah Catherine Hook. And we're going to take you through a scene from First Kill, shot by shot. This is And Scene. So we are about to watch the scene in Noah Harrington's party mm -hmm. where Juliet and Cal lock eyes for the first time that night. There's that good song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little double take. Okay. Oh, there she is. 
Julia and Calliope are really just classmates by this point in the Maybe story. Maybe to Calliope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they both have their own, you know, hidden agendas. I would say Juliet is definitely there to get her flirt on mm -hmm. with Calliope. Yeah. That's all she's expecting. What happens next may not have been on Juliet's agenda, but it was very much on Calliope. <laughs> I love this song. Me too. I I know. I feel bad because I actually don't know if I've actually I've played spin the bottle. Yeah. Ever. So that was mm. our that was our first time playing spin the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> you got to see it. <laughs> Cheers. Definitely water. <laughs> it's always water. Juliet is more on the reserved, like shy, sensitive side. She might not be as experienced as the rest of the crowd. Um, but when Calliope comes to town, she's just head over heels. Mm -hmm. She kind of establishes that Juliet was the first person to really even say anything to her yeah. in, in the school and to even acknowledge her presence. Although she knows Juliet's truth, she doesn't appear to be like any of the things she was taught to fear mm. or trained to kill. Wow, okay. <laughs> Not wasting any time, huh? Sorry. Socially awkward. Um, and have wanted to do that for a while now. We know. <laughs> and would like to do it again. Um. Okay. I don't think Calliope thinks Juliet has her figured out. No, definitely not. I don't, I don't think, Ju think Juliet that. just thinks you're cool and yeah, hot. I think and Calliope's using that to her advantage to like. That's like bait, you know? <laughs> you <think? laughs> but, She's like, oh my gosh, she likes me. Yeah. No, she just wants to stay cute. <laughs> I could also imagine her being like, having this fear of rejection thing, like just having lots of different thoughts swimming through her head. Right. Like, what's gonna happen? Right. But we all know what Juliet wants. Right. <laughs> it's plain and simple. <laughs> That part, right there. <laughs> That's my favorite. We were like huddled to the side having to hold one another right. while they're setting up camera and we were just like, it's useless to walk away. Right. And we are holding each other and just messing around and I felt her stake all of a sudden. And I was like, bitch, is there a stake, stake in, in your, your shorts? <laughs> and she, we just lost it, I mean, on the floor crying. And like everyone's like trying to like operate the camera and everything. And we're we're, just, we're delirious at this point too. We've it's just been so making funny. out all day. All day. <laughs> I'm so glad we can share this moment with each Me other. Me too. I'm watching oh, us make okay. out. <laughs> I was waiting and for the, the cherries. cherries. Yeah, I was waiting for the cherries. Classic cherries. We knocked over the cherries Once. one time. One take wonders. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to move my back off the wall, almost like a dance, to get my hand in my the back of my shorts to get the steak. And I was like, it's so funny. Like, I feel like that's how like seahorses do it. Like <laughs> they like just ride this way, and we just kept making jokes about seahorsing around. Yeah, very seriously, you know, making out, pushing up against <gasps> the wall, and it's like dead silent. Everyone's super focused. Great. Now put your hand there. All right, now put your hand here. Uh, okay, now do the seahorse. <laughs> and it was just so, we lost it. Completely lost Immediately. it. Immediately. It was done. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah, there it is. And then, black, black out. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Those moments for vampires are so, are so iconic, mm -hmm. and I, I I don't know. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Like, how could it not be? It was so fun, and I just wanted to keep doing it. Just keep going, going. Um, and I honestly, I feel so happy with the way that it turned out. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, I mean, the entire scene. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so 
beautifully shot mm -hmm. and I yeah, I really think people will love it. Thank you for watching this biting shot by shot breakdown. Check out First Kill this Friday. I want to shamelessly plug a new digital series I'm hosting for most, yes me, and Netflix is still watching Netflix YouTube channel titled Dismantled. In the first episode, I'll be breaking down the barrier gaze trope and its historically harmful and trash representations of LGBTQ characters in horror and other genres. Better yet, here's a taste. We are here to talk about on-screen death, but in a fun, educational, queer way. While LGBTQ-coded characters have always existed, I mean, duh, we're fabulous, we've been here since the Earth began. In the late 19th and 20th centuries, we saw film and literature feature same-gender romantic couples, but one of the lovers was killed, died, or somehow miserable by the end of the film. This is what makes Netflix's lesbian vampire love story, First Kill, feel so epic and radical. Not only are both Cal and Juliet openly and loudly queer, but their conflict is that one is a vampire and the other a vampire hunter. LGBTQ horror fans want to be included, not just as victims, but as final boys, girls, non-binary hotties. Hollywood has spent a long time burying the gays, but we have risen. And we are hungry. Angelina Jolie once said, when other little girls wanted to be ballet dancers, I kind of wanted to be a vampire. And thanks to Sarah Catherine and Imani's portrayals of Juliet and Calliope in First Kill, I feel that quote now more than ever. Like any show or film based on a written body of work, fans are sure to spot the parallels and differences from what they read to what they see in its adaptation. We had our star vamps, Sarah Catherine and Imani, as well as author, writer, and executive producer, Victoria Schwab, read a passage from the original short story to start that research for you. Enjoy story time with this trio reading what I like to call fang fiction. The door swings shut plunging them both into the dark. Dark, it's a relative thing. Light spills beneath the bottom of the door, and Juliet's eyes steal the sliver, use it to paint the details of the crowded closet. The coats taking up 90% of the space, a pile of boxes around their feet, the hangers knocking into the back of her head, and Calliope, not some stolen sideways glance, but right here, the slope of her neck and the curve of her mouth and those steady brown eyes somehow warm and sharp. Hi, she says. Her voice low and short. Hi, whispers Juliet, trying to sound like her sister with her airy confidence. But it comes out all wrong, less like a breath and more like a whistle, a squeak. Calliope laughs less at her than at this. The crowded closet, the closeness of their bodies. And for once, the other girl seems nervous too, tense, like she's holding her breath. But she doesn't pull away. Jules hesitates thinks she should either be closer together or further apart. Ben never said what they were supposed to do. 60 seconds isn't much time. 60 seconds is forever. Calliope smells good. Of course she does. But it's her lotion, or her chapstick. It's her. Jules's senses flare and narrow until all she can smell is the other girl's skin and her sweat and her blood. Blood. And something else. Something she can't place. Something that sends warning bells ringing duly through her head. But then Calliope kisses her. Her mouth is so soft. Her lips parting between hers, and there are no fireworks. The world doesn't stop. She doesn't taste like magic or sunshine. She tastes like the grapefruit soda she was drinking. Like fresh air and sugar. And something simple and human. Well, if that left you craving more vampires and hunters, now would probably be the time for you to check out First Kill. And lucky for you, it's streaming this Friday, only on Netflix. I wish I could talk all things vampire with you forever, but the sun is rising and I must return to my casket. Be sure to catch First Kill this Friday, June 10th on Netflix. And don't miss me co-host a special live recording of the Geeked podcast this Friday, right here on the Geeked Week live stream. See you then. I'm from a lineage thousands of years old of the best monster hunters to ever walk the earth. 
Even on good days, I feel like I still don't fit in. Like everyone else has it all figured out. Oh yeah, that. I haven't told anyone, of course. You are a legacy vampire made vampires with love. See their reflection in a mirror. We're hunters. More importantly, you're my daughter. Which is why we've decided you're ready for your first kill. Here's to killing monsters. In a world of make-believe. Your body is changing. Yeah, my body. But very soon, you are going to have to make your first kill. Hi. It's Juliet, right? Yeah. You're Calliope? Well, Cal's good. Who are you, Calliope? Where'd you come from? Addicted to loving you, how does it feel? You're nothing like the monsters I grew up hating. I just want to live my life. We can't be together. It won't work. I've forbidden you from seeing her. We're not supposed to be. I know my feelings for you are real. Juliet and every legacy in Savannah dies tonight. Run now! I'll kill for you. We will have a problem. We will always have a problem. I had to choose between you and my family. I choose my family. What about us? We faced everyone, monster and human, who tried to come between us. We got this. I'll kill for you. Want to stay in the know about your favorite Netflix shows and films? You'll find news, videos, interviews, and more on Taboom, the official Netflix site to help find and fuel your fandom. Stranger Things, The Gray Man, The Umbrella Academy, and more. Make Geek Week last all year. On Netflix, last all year. On Netflix.com slash Taboom.